Hello, everybody. How are y'all doing this evening? I'm kicking in a little early tonight. How's everyone going? Wanted to take a moment and pop in and say hello to everyone. Steven, Dave, Troy, David, Jim, how you doing? Troy got here early, man. How you doing, Michael Pearson? Congratulations to Michael Pearson for winning the Joint Maker jig uh, this past Wednesday when we were showing that off. Hey, Jeff from Ohio. What's happening? Dean, good to see you back. Richard, Big Daddy Fish. Kevin, Cecil, everybody's popping in now. Good. They're like, uh-oh, we better get going. So, as you know, last week, uh, we did a sample cut or, or cut on the dovetail box on the dovetails. We cut the dovetails on the joint maker jig uh, and, and everything. And this is the uh, assembled box here. It's not fully assembled. It's just dry fit right now. Um, but uh, that was a look at our joints there. They're sitting proud. Sitting just slightly proud, like I like it uh, to um, sand flush and everything. And but we need to kind of uh, work on the rest of the design. Uh, these parts, there's still some milling that's going to be done on the inside uh, for the dividers and the bottom of the box, and then we have uh, the lid and. Last week, when we were talking about this, I was kind of almost dead set on creating a 3D carving in the lid. And someone, I forget who it was, it might have been Mike or it might have been uh, Dean or somebody, but they talked about doing an inlay on the lid. And that just made me perk up and everything because um, I think that would be ideal for this. Uh, and so. It gives me the opportunity to talk to you guys and girls about V-carve inlaying, uh, using the V-carve V-tool uh, to do some V-carve inlaying and all. Uh, it gives me a chance to talk to you about the actual fundamentals behind a V-carve inlay, uh, and uh, how and why we approach it the way we do. Uh, and um, it also gives me a chance to, you know, I usually like some kind of contrast. Uh, in my boxes, usually like, you know, my sides or something would be a different uh, material or something, have some kind of contrast in the dovetails. And in this case, it's just all cherry. Uh, it doesn't look very light. It looks lifeless right now. But man, when it gets that finish on there, it just pops. Uh, that, that nice cherry color is going to pop and everything. But uh, all in all, the dovetail joints came out well. and we are going to we're going to work on the lid. We're going to talk about SketchUp and importing files in from SketchUp and show you how to work on that and all that wonderful stuff. So I hope y'all are jazzed up about this. Uh, and um, uh, I think it was Dean. Dean. <laughs> hope y'all are jazzed up about this and we can um, have some fun. I've got some samples pulled up here i've got the actual kind of lid layout but i have not brought anything in for the import from google sketchup and so we're going to go through all of that and then we're going to try to do it in a timely manner uh tonight and everything we'll see how that goes all right let's see here already starting off with some questions let's jump into a question before we get started in the design Lainey, could the dovetail bit you used be bought uh, in a quarter inch shank uh, for those of us that have smaller routers? I don't know if that particular bit could be bought in a smaller shank, but absolutely. I mean, we can, you know, uh, my other dovetail bits are quarter inch shank. Um, the uh, key to that bit is it's a seven degree dovetail bit. It happens to have a cutting diameter of 17 30 seconds. Um, but uh, it's a seven degree bit and dovetail angles come in a lot of different degrees and everything. So what you could absolutely do, Amazon, 
you know, uh, Rockler, Woodcraft. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, places online uh, that you can search and, um, you know, just look for a dovetail bit. I, I use a seven degree. Uh, that one happens to be a seven degree. My, I think my other dovetail bit's also a seven degree bit. Um, but they come in, in varying degrees, you know, depending on what you want. So Jeff, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that particular model fruit, uh, the 22115 uh, fruit bit that I have that has a quarter or a half inch shank, you may be able to go to fruit.com and look at their dovetail bit collection and see if they happen to have one in a quarter inch shank. Um, but uh, there, if not, there's a lot of dovetail bits out there that have that. So um, that's uh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Good question. All right. Trying to let some time pass. I started five minutes early. I'm letting everybody get in. Uh, yeah, Jeff. So seven degrees. That's kind of, you know, uh, and they come in, you know, various cutting diameters that, that angle, the bottom of the cutter, the width, they come in varying, uh, diameters and things. Um, and, uh, this one happens to be a 1732nd. Doesn't have to be exactly. You can adjust accordingly, but uh, the seven degree is kind of one of my go-tos. All right. Just looking at everybody popping in. Uh, we got 31 eyes on us right now. Welcome to all 31 of you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, jump in. Man, I was excited last week. Did y'all see that stupid ass post that I did on spindle training videos? Uh, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> now on my dovetails on the pin board i gave myself an offset allowance of 0 0.002 that's kind of my go-to allowance for when i'm doing inlays regular inlays not v-carve inlays when i'm doing dovetails when i'm trying to fit one part into another 0 0.002 is kind of my start off go-to and from there, I'll increase in small increments until I get that perfect fit. And 90% of the time, I do not have to do any increase beyond that. But man, I I, um, I carved the rest of the parts. I actually videoed the carving of the rest of the parts. And I didn't get a chance to edit the video into like a really fast forward, you know, kind of scenario, you know, to uh, show it um showing the rotating of the parts and how simple it was but i ended up putting my quarter inch end mill in carving all of the quarter inch pocket stuff um on the tailboard uh switched over to the uh dovetail bit did the dovetail cuts then i raised my little fence my bottom fence that i had set for my 10 inch boards i raised that up and got everything set up for the eight inch boards eight inch long boards and uh, did uh, my pocket cuts on all four pieces. And when I put that box together and I could literally just press, you know, put a little pressure on it, but I could just press those parts into place and, <laughs> and get a fit. Let me see if my camera going to uh, defocus on me, focus, focus. And to get a fit uh, that was just bang up, and everything i was so excited so it made me feel like i was young again you know without screaming hercules but uh i posted that stupid post on spindle training videos with that picture of me when i was young and somewhat in shape as a kind of a metaphor of damn i feel good with that cut <laughs> and uh yeah so if you didn't check it out, check it out. I got to get back into the gym one day. All right. All that being said, uh, let's see. We had some uh, last minute folks pop in. Welcome, Crystal. Welcome back. Um, Crystal and Stephen from. Oh, shit. Hold on. I was just about to say. Calusa. Cabinets. Oh, dang. I think I missed. I think I mispronounced the word. Um. We all know it's pronounced fruid, not fruid. <laughs> fruid. I honestly, I, well, the way I pronounce it, fruid, uh, you would think that the U comes before the E, fruid, the way I say it. 
Uh, I think it might be pronounced Frood or Fred. <laughs> but uh, I call it Fruid. Uh, and if anybody works for Fruid and uh, want to correct me on the pronunciation, throw it out there. All right. But yeah, I was excited. The box fit together like a freaking champ. Uh, and now I just need to make good on the rest of it. It's a simple, it's, there's nothing this, this I mean, I'm not like, I didn't freaking invent the atom. You know, it, it, it's, there's nothing ex extravagant about that carcass, but just knowing that spending the time on the setup, you know, spending that time, putting that jig on the table making sure the fence was true to the CNC machine running true, making sure the other fence was square. Just that little, you know, that time on that setup. We always spend time on our setup. When we build jigs for our table saw and we build that cross cut sled, we spend time on that setup, getting that fence square to that blade and all of these things and all. And then when you make those kick ass clean cuts, it's just that sense of, man, it was worth it every minute you know or whatever however long it took it's all about the setup our success or failure on a cnc machine on our table saw on our router table in our projects in general how things fit together that moment or however long we spend on the setup getting everything tuned in just right making sure our saws are tuned in we don't not have any run out in our bits and things like that all of these things come into play and when they all come together and you end up with a, just a, just mm, nice fit. It's just exciting. I, I get excited over the stupidest little things, but it's, 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 it's all good. All right, everybody, enough of that talk and rambling. I hope everyone's doing well. I know we're still in some tough times and I know we don't hear, I mean, and I don't watch the news, so I don't hear very much about what's happening in the world of COVID-19 and everything. Uh, Crystal and Steven did share a link with me, um, a, uh, back about some companies. They own a shop saber, uh, CNC, uh, and, uh, the folks over at shop saber were highlighting some of their, uh, customers and what their customers are doing to help in the fight against COVID-19 with providing medical staff with, uh, you know, headgear, uh, and face shields and things and gowns even, uh, how they were taking their cabinet shops that they, you know, where they're making parts and converting them uh, to produce a product to fit the current need uh, and, and things. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure if Crystal or Steven happen to be at their computer and they have that link that they shared with me on the Facebook Messenger or something, uh, they could throw that link up into the video uh, into the chat room so you guys can check it out. And uh, just inspiring story and maybe give you something to think about, uh, you know, uh, how you could help out your local community uh, with your machines or your capabilities as woodworkers, as builders, as makers. Uh, what skill set can you bring to the table to help your community uh, with uh, the, uh, the COVID uh, pandemic? Uh, and uh, these folks uh, with their machines uh, were just, uh, you know, they're go-getters. They went out there and they, they came up with a design uh, and, um, you know, and, and there's three different companies they highlighted. And, and in the three companies, two of the products looked almost identical, like they file shared. Uh, but each one of them said, I came up with a design. I came up with a design. I came up with a design. Uh, one was completely different and everything. But all three served an absolute purpose. And, uh, hey, if you're looking for a way to give back to your friends, your family, your community, your churches, whatever the case may be, your hospitals and doctors and all that stuff, your first responders, uh, think about the tools that you have at your disposal, your skill and the ability to maybe produce something, even those cool little hand door grabbers, those hand savers uh, that uh, some of them make that, that kind of hook on doors to open doors uh, so they're not touching those metal door handles and things and they hook on keychains and things like that. Very cool stuff. Very uh, innovative. Uh, I, we have some customers at Digital Wood Carver that are carving uh, what they call ear savers. These are they wrap around the back of the head 
so that the medical masks, those rubber band elastic bands are not hooking on the ears, hurting those ears, you know, from those rubber bands on it all day. They're hooking on these adjustable uh, straps that wrap around comfortably around the back of the head. Uh, and, um, you know, they're popping out sheets of those at a time. And so with stuff like that, uh, I encourage you to look at your skill set, see what you can bring to the table and um, help out wherever you can. And uh, there's some very cool designs and things uh, that you could you're, you're all creative individuals in one way or another. Uh, we see some now we see, you know, there was a medical mask shortage, but you check out Etsy. There's all kinds of uh, new designer masks. Uh, for people to wear cloths and everything. I don't know. I can't speak for the quality of how well they protect, uh, you know, uh, and everything. But, you know, there's some pretty awesome looking designs and things like that. So I encourage you that. So thank you for sharing that with me, uh, Crystal and uh, Stephen over at Calusa Cabinets. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing your company name right. Uh, but um, very cool stuff. And if you have that link, throw it out there. I'm sure other people would like to see it as well. All right. Uh, let's see here. Dean says, Laney, you have personality plus. Hold on. I got it. I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw. <laughs> I got to throw this up here. Laney, you have personality plus, but I, I don't know if I can trust a guy who can't pronounce Freud. Freud. Ha ha ha. Uh, click like everyone. Uh, that's how we say thanks for your time, Laney. All right. Awesome. Is it pronounced Freud? F-O-R-Y-D? Freud? All right. If it is, for the last however many years I've been a woodworker, my, most of my life, uh, I've been pronouncing it wrong. So, uh, <laughs> I, I swear if I go to a woodworking show to teach a class and I go up to the Freud booth and I call them Freud or Freud or whatever and they look at me weird, I'm going to say, okay, guys, I'm going to ask them, all right, what's the proper way? You know, Freud. Okay, if it's Freud, awesome. If it's Freud, great. Yeah, I don't know. We'll 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 uh we'll save that for better people. <laughs> All right, let's get on to it. We're gonna go over to the design side of things. Let's get the um uh design program up on the screen and let me get it uh in a little bit of a mid-size here while I'm adjusting my screen resolution for everybody. Let me minimize these screens. I forgot to adjust the screen resolution. I always do that. I want to try to make the screen resolution as big as possible so you guys and girls can see where my mouse is going and all of that wonderful jazz. So we are in screen one of three. So that one needs to be changed to 1280. Okay. Let's uh, keep those changes. Look what it does to my poor dashboard, but that's okay. It makes things uh, look good when we are in the design software. So now let's see if I can get things to pop up here. All right. All right. Isn't that a pretty looking 3D drawing? What you're looking at on the screen is a program called SketchUp. Now SketchUp is a uh, program that a lot of woodworkers are using uh, to uh, basically bring their design ideas to three-dimensional life. Uh, and that's exactly what I use SketchUp for. Uh, SketchUp uh, allows me to build a project in a three-dimensional view uh, so that I can kind of visualize and get the sizes and the aspect ratios and all that stuff uh, correct. And the cool thing about uh, the relationship with SketchUp and Vetric is we can import this three-dimensional model file in into an exploded view, which brings all the parts in and all, so that we can work off that to create tool paths and things. And um, just to give you a little quick uh, tour of the SketchUp window, let's go into a big screen for this just for a second here. I've got some drawing tools here. Um, I've got my line tool, rectangle, circle, and arc tool. Uh, and with these uh, general shapes and everything, uh, and uh, with the power of SketchUp, I can do some pretty awesome things. Uh, when I'm drawing in SketchUp, I like using the keyboard shortcuts. If you notice this dimension box down here, when I'm drawing, as I draw, uh, I can type in a dimension. And it's the, you know, uh, typically, it is the length um, 
or the, I'm sorry, the uh, width followed by the length uh, with a comma in between. So if I wanted a 12, comma 12 rectangle, I could hit enter and create that. I have a tool called push pull, which this allows me to extrude parts. So I can bring that up uh, to extrude it in and everything. So if I wanted this part to be a half inch, I could type in 0.5 and hit enter. And then uh, I've basically created a part here. Now, uh, that part can then be uh, selected by a triple click. And uh, if I hit the letter G on my keyboard, that turns that part into a component. And I could name that component. Let's call that base uh, and click create. And so now this component is uh, one solid piece. And if I need to edit it for whatever reason, uh, I would go back to my selection tool and I could triple click or double click actually uh, to get into that part to be able to, um, you know, continue to work with it. And if I extrude this down a little bit and this down a little further, uh, you know, we can, if I go all the way or whatever the case may be, um, you know, we can quickly uh, space bar to get out of the tool. We can quickly, you know, change the components appearance and everything you know uh into three-dimensional and uh notice i went extruded too far i went past my point of no return there um but uh we have a variety of tools we have our tape measure tool which helps us lay out guidelines and when we pull guidelines uh i can specify a specific dimension um if I said, all right, it's nine and five, five sixteenths right now. If I said 10 inches and hit enter, it'll throw it over 10 inches from that guideline. Um, if I have a part, uh, the M key, keyboard shortcuts are great with SketchUp. The M key is the move tool, which means I can grab this part and move it around. Uh, but if I hold the control key, I can actually drag off additional parts and things. And watch this cool thing. Let me back up a little bit. Let me back up here and get this kind of somewhat uh, straight here. Uh, let's say that I grab this right in the center and I hold down my control key and I drag that copy off. And let's say I drag that copy off. I'm watching my length down there at the bottom. Let's say I bring it at 1.4 inches. Okay, drop it there. Now, if I hit the letter X and the number three and hit enter, it's going to bring out, Instead of that one copy, it brought out three copies at the same equal spacing. So it's a very cool tool for layout and things. I can add colors and textures and tones. Uh, you know, no matter what I choose, I can, you know, change colors of things, whatever it may be. And it's a fun program to get to know. Now, I'm not a SketchUp expert by any means, but I am pretty proficient in it. And I owe all of that to Jay Bates of jcustomcreations.com. Uh, Jay is a good friend. He's a fellow YouTuber and creator, and uh, he has a wonderful series of SketchUp tutorials and the download link for the SketchUp software that I use here, version 8, uh, at jayscustomcreations.com. So big shout out to Jay for getting me up and going with SketchUp to allow me to do things like this so I can visualize my projects in place. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's get back into our selection tool and let's select these items and hit delete. I don't want to be bringing those into my, I'm hitting delete and selecting these guidelines as well. I do not want to bring them into my Vetrix software. I just want all eight of these parts. There are eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the bottom is eight. So there's eight parts that are going to be brought in. Now, <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, minimize this. Again, this is not a class on SketchUp. It's a class on the Vetrix software and how to import from SketchUp. But man, do I encourage you to give it a shot because you can really put build some furniture or whatever. You know, you can actually build houses and buildings and landscapes and all kinds of things. I use it strictly for woodworking, for building my furniture uh, in a three-dimensional space. And I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Uh, jayscustomcreations.com and I watched all of his videos not knowing a lick about SketchUp. I downloaded it from his website, had a marathon, watched his videos and there you go. That's how I learned how to use SketchUp. All right. 
So we have this dovetail box. We need to bring these parts in. Now of these parts, I'm only gonna, I'm not gonna be using the lid uh, as one of the parts, uh, even though it's gonna be brought in, but I, I'm gonna mainly be specifically bringing these parts in because, and let me show you why, because I'm gonna take and hit the letter M for move and move this out of the way. And then I'm gonna do a quick hold down the middle mouse button and do a swoop around. Uh, and then we can slide over, slide over and zoom into this. Now, each of these parts has a groove, groovy dude, has a groove uh, in there. Notice that's a stop dado, um, a stop groove. Stop dado is this one here, stop groove, groove with the grain, dado against the grain. Uh, but uh, it has a stop groove, uh, not running all the way because I do not want to see the little, I don't want to have to do any wood filler on the end of my joint, you know, when I'm. Um, uh you know uh finishing this box and everything so i got a stop groove here and i got a stop dado here and those parts or those cuts are going to occur on all four parts as well as the bottom and let's select these two here and uh, we'll right click and go hide uh all four parts have these grooves for the dividers that are going to go in there even the bottom piece has a little small 16th inch deep groove uh for that um for that divider strictly for that divider you know and today um i looked at my box and uh i thought man do i want this to be a jewelry box do i want to redesign it a bit uh do i want to make it like a little uh a nice little decorative gun box for because I'm from the South, so I have guns, uh, and um, uh, I thought, you know, I have no uh, children living in the house or anything like that, so it doesn't necessarily need to be locked up, and I uh, thought it might be a nice gun for my everyday carry, a uh, nice box, uh, but it's too small. It doesn't fit, doesn't fit, doesn't fit, uh, so maybe next time. Uh, I make some very cool concealment boxes that look like pictures, uh, slide the face to the left or the right, and voila secret compartment in there and um all that kind of stuff but this is not one of them this would just be a decorative box to store my edc in okay all right let's uh get out of that and let's go into our vetric software now on my vetric software my job setup what i did here is my longest piece because remember the parts are already cut they already got the dovetails on the end of them right they're they're done so i got to put them back on the table to cut the grooves that's the only things that are getting done with the side pieces and everything so what i did is i took my longest piece which is my front and back uh the 10 inches by four inches wide by five eighths of an inch thick and that is my job setup and uh on this i am going to be uh using my dwc quick set zeroing block so i will reference off the material face with that block but I will be starting from the bottom left corner because it's going to lock up. All the pieces are going to lock up against the fence um, on my spoil board uh, for me to reference. And even the reason why I went with the longest piece, because my other two parts are eight inches in length, same four inch height and everything. And I can still do, you know, my tool pathing and everything on this because I'm referencing off the corner. If I was referencing off the center, you know, I'd have to make sure everything is nice and centered and all that stuff, but I'm referencing off the corner. So whether it's a, my 10 inch piece or my eight inch piece, I'll be able to lay out the vectors that we're about to import appropriately. All right, I'm going to set my resolution high, even though I'm not working with 3D parts and I'm going to click OK and we're off and running. So what do you all think of my announcer voice? Is it annoying or what? I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to get groovy here in a minute. I'm just kidding. All right, enough playing around. Let's get busy here now. Okay, y'all thought, who in the world just jumped in on Lainey's microphone? Let's get started here. First thing we're going to do is a SketchUp file is a vector. Okay, it's a vector. So we're going to import a vector. We can import a vector two ways for you guys and girls that are new to Vetric. We can use the file operation tools in our drawing tab. This cute little folder right here is import vectors, 
or we can go to the file menu down to import, import vectors and uh, bring them in that way as well. Okay. So I'm going to use the nice little icon that uh, is laid out here for me and we're going to open that up. Now, in my downloads folder, um, I've got a file here. I was playing around with a ball and claw foot uh, drawing one in the other day. Um, I've got a folder here. I have a folder. Where did I put that folder? Is it in my documents? Documents. Spindle TV. <gasps> There's the dovetail box class. All right. All right. So I've got my dovetail box. The reason why this auto save is here is because I have SketchUp open and uh, it's, you know, if, if it's kind of keeping track of every move I made, every little part I drew and all that stuff. And if the computer crashes, it will uh, revert to an auto save that, you know, it automatically saves we draw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of SketchUp. Uh, I'm not going to save the changes to my box. Uh, I didn't make any changes to it. And that auto save will disappear there. Okay. So now when I bring in that dovetail box design, I'm going to get prompted with a SketchUp file import box. We talked about a little bit about this uh, last week when I was briefly showing it, but they're on the layout of the imported data. Our data is our vectors, our design. Um, I could do an exploded flat layout, which is the layout that I want for all of my parts. And there are a total of eight parts coming into uh, the Vectric software here. Uh, I want to auto orientate them. Basically, large face is the top face, and that's fine because there's really um, you know, uh, no problem with that. Uh, it's coming in in a flat two dimensional drawing. So, um, it could be specific, uh, you know, uh, if I wanted to be more specific, I could orientate it by the material color and I could have painted one face that I wanted to bring br brought in face up. I could bring that in, um, and choose the color of that face from this list and that will bring in all the faces with that color orientated upward. But this is a flat layout. It's not a three dimensional view. Uh, and um, we're gonna bring that in by auto orientating. And the gap between the parts, I'm just gonna throw them up one inch apart, you know, no big deal. Where there are polygons in the uh, SketchUp software, I want the Vectric software to, to create circles for those polygons uh, and try to best to fit the circles and the appropriate uh, SketchUp circles. and uh, refit arcs uh, to boundaries. Basically, it tries to fit arcs to the appropriate SketchUp fillets, uh, you know, those arcs and things. So I always have that checked. As far as the component handling, each of those individual parts, uh, those eight parts, they're all grouped together. How I triple clicked and turned it into a component, they're all components. So I want to kind of group them uh, together because uh, sometimes. I may have five parts selected and make those five individual components one component. And when it imports those five parts in, it will group them together, keep them organized and grouped together. And I kind of like to do that. Now, components, uh, they are uh, typically named, you know, they have this kind of underscore, keep them together. And uh, basically, keep, keep, don't, don't just all the little vectors that you redraw. Don't throw it all willy-nilly. Keep everything together in its place. And that's what that does. Um, and as far as replacing the outer boundary for flat jobs only, I do not replace the outer boundary. I let whatever boundary um, vector draws based on my part. That's what it brings in. All right. Now, I'm going to bring it in both ways as a three view, front, top, and side, and a flat view just so you can see. Let's go ahead and do the first one. Eight parts coming in right now. Uh, so there is my front and back, my two sides, my two little divider parts, my lid, and my base, my bottom. Okay, so it's a flat, exploded view. All right. Each of these parts are individually grouped together. All these individual vectors in here are grouped together. And we're going to show you how to handle and maintain those uh, to be able to create our carvings and stuff. Because um, we got to create some fillets and all that good stuff and all in a minute. Uh, but that is the flatted, flatted. That's the flatted exploded view. That is the flat exploded view. 
All right, let's go ahead and uh, delete that for a second. Let's bring in the three point view just for kicks and giggles so you can see how that looks. We're going to go ahead and bring in the front, top, and side views on our eight parts. So we're going to do that. And basically, it brings in the uh, whole model completely grouped together uh, with a front view. There's my lid open a side view and a top view it does not explode the parts it does not separate them uh, or any of that jazz it just brings it in as a three-point view and that is not what i want we do not want to work with that like that at this point now if i was creating a piece of molding and trim or something like that and i needed the front side and top view absolutely i would bring that in but it's not appropriate for what I'm doing now. I need the flat exploded view. I need it to separate all those parts and bring them in independently. Awesome. All right. You guys with me here? Um, <clears throat> all right. Let's see here. Uh, now that we've gotten that far, let's take a quick moment here. Uh, bring me back in and let's see if I have any kind of questions that I could quickly answer uh, before we move on to the next phase. Let's see here. Aces. Absolutely. Here's some, uh, you know, Troy, uh, if you guys are reading the chats and stuff, uh, the YouTube chat and all Troy is talking about uh, you can use your arrow keys uh, to lock in your axes when drawing and things like that. All of these keys, little tips. So there are some SketchUp users in here, and uh, that's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dean says, hey, Lainey, there was a chance to try the multiple erase we talked about on Thursday. Hold the shift key while dragging the eraser and erase all the lines in one swoop. Um, yep, there was an opportunity for that. Let's see here. Um, let's do this. I'm going to ungroup this particular part right here. He's, uh, wanting me to, wait a minute. Eraser tool. Hold on, Dean. Wait, wait hold on. What, what, what program are you in? What, what's our eraser tool? <laughs> All right, now, Dean, uh, go back into the bottom and type it in again at the bottom. Uh, what's our eraser tool in Vetric? Are you referring to Vetric? Are you talking about the snip tool, the trim tool? Let's let's try a multi-line trim. I think that's what he was talking about. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this real quick. We have a variety of lines and vectors and things here uh, that we can trim. Uh, and also for kicks and giggles, I'm also going to draw in a couple of overlaps here as well and let's give her a go so hold that shift key to delete closed non-overlapping vectors hold down the shift key when clicking remember what i said last week as far as the shift key um the shift key will uh, allow me to trim but you know it's not um going to you know if i just hold down the shift key and everything my scissors will open when i get over a line close when I'm not in your line, but I have to click. If I hold down the left mouse button and just drag it around, I'm holding the shift and the mouse button now. Those scissors just are snipping, you know, when I'm away in two, away in two, away in two, but nothing is trimming, all right? So unfortunately, that is not a thing in Ventric. It'd be cool if it were, but it's not. Um, I'm going to group that back together just for right now until we get to the ungrouping, the unveiling part. Uh, so. I believe, Dean, that's what we uh, we got to uh, last week. We talked a little bit about it, but that was a good opportunity to try it again. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, Javi says, uh, I created the plans for the new house in SketchUp. Aside from AutoCAD, it's one of the new standards for architects. Well, the versions with all the professional add-ons anyway. So yeah, SketchUp comes in a free version, which is this version 8. Like I said, jayscustomcreations.com. You can download it. Uh, but it also has a paid version. They call it the pro version. 
Uh, and uh, I have, uh, you know, I've been using SketchUp for quite a few years now. I've never opted for the pro version. I do not need it. Uh, SketchUp version eight does everything I need to do for the woodworking side of things. But when it comes to things like laying out a house and all the little tools and add-ons and things like that, lawns and landscapes and all that, absolutely the pro version would be the way to go. And there is a fee for that. I don't know what it is uh, because I don't pay it. So uh, I use the free version. But yeah, Javi, good point. All right, let's see here. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. I appreciate that. You know, uh, when, to be honest with you, uh, when uh, editing videos, and, and last week, I do have to apologize, or, or the or last Tuesday, I do have to apologize. I kept noticing when I was watching back the video for doing a little edit or cleanup and all, I was noticing my voice was dropping off. And what was happening was uh, my microphone kept turning and turning and turning and turning and turning and turning. And, turning and, and it's not meant to be talking face in. It's meant to be talking into the side. So it was turning uh, because things were loose and everything, and I was losing audio. And uh, yeah, so I apologize for the, about the audio glitch. Um, but um, when I'm editing videos, hours of footage, when I'm shooting videos in the shop and editing it, I actually get sick of my voice after a while, just like you guys and the girls do after a few hours. All right, let's see here. Uh, you've been watching news radio, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, let's see here. All right. So, um, I do not see any additional questions and, uh, let's move on. Let's get back into the design here. All right. We've just imported the parts. Now, what do we need to do? Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move the parts off to the side from my drawing area here. And I'm going to be bringing them over one at a time to my material. Now, for me, selecting the part and hitting the F9 key on the keyboard is a quick keyboard shortcut for center to material. Uh, otherwise, we can use the alignment tool and align to material center. Either way gets you there. Uh, the F9 is just a keyboard shortcut. All right. So. I've got my tail board here. I got one of two tail boards here. And uh, as I said, everything is grouped together. Uh, they brought it in groups. So we're going to ungroup that. And uh, we basically have our middle groove here, which is our stop dado, uh, stop dado and stop groove joined together. So it's one vector. Uh, then I have my outer boundary for the other. Not a very complicated part here. Uh, it's when we get into the tell or the pin boards that we have to kind of work with some of the vectors. Now, what we need to do with this in order to make this a usable part uh, to carve is I've got to be absolutely aware that when I create my pocket tool path to cut this out, that the bit that I'm using, and let's say that I wanted to use an eighth inch end mill here. Um, let's get that on the board. I have to be aware that, you know, when this end mill is cutting out this pocket, it cannot get into that corner. So I'm going to end up with a radius there. Um, let me zoom in. Let me get you centered. Let me, let me get you centered here, boy. There we go. Um, I'm going to end up with a radius there unless I give that bit somewhere to go uh, to create that nice uh, kind of area for my sharp corners on my inserts to fit into either that or i would have to round off the edges of my inserts to try to fit them in to this groove and i do not want to do that so i'd much rather uh create what's called a dog bone fillet we're going to come over to the fillet tool here and my eighth inch end mill is what i am going to use to cut these uh you know pockets and also my radius is a sixteenth of an inch now, a normal fillet basically puts a nice arc on a part, right? If we click on it again, it'll take it away. A dog bone fillet is designed to create a clearance on internal corners, okay, so that slotted parts can fit together. And my slotted part is my divider is going to spit into this pocket here. So my slotted part. 
Uh, a T-bone fillet is when the diameter of my tool is the same size as my slot that I'm cutting, and I need a place for that bit to go. A T-bone fillet would basically extrude the parts outward. You know, it'd get my router bit would come up and back over here, come up, come back over here. And that gives me three nice faces, one at this edge, one at this edge and this edge for my slotted part to fit into. And the corners have a place to go. The corners of that part have a place to go. But I digress. This is not a fitted part. My bit is smaller than my pocket area here. Uh, by the way, my pocket area needs to be adjusted before I do anything further. And I did not want to take the time to do it in SketchUp, uh, but I went and measured my pieces that I'm going to be using for the bottom and the dividers. And they came out at 0 0.2275. Uh, and these slots are currently 0.1875. So if I were to measure uh, horizontally, from this point to this point and click again, 0.1875. So I need to widen some things up here. All right, so we're gonna see how to do that too. Now, if I just take the part, right? And uh, I could offset it, right? I could offset it, that might work, right? Offset tool, outward, we're gonna go 0.2275. Minus 0.1875 equals, not the enter key, the equal key. So I got to go a little bit more, right? Uh, 0.04, uh, create sharp corners, delete the original, click offset, and Bob is your uncle, right? That's one way to do it. And so if I were to measure that part now, we're at 2675 because it did it on both sides. Right, we had an extra ten thousandths of an inch, uh, so probably 0.2275. Probably only needed to go outward half of that. So let's undo, undo, undo. Control Z for you keyboard shortcut nuts, and uh, for those of you that don't use the keyboard shortcut, undo is right here. All right, let's go ahead and let's go back into that offset tool. Uh, let's divide that by two. And uh, offset, oops, undo that, control Z, delete the original, click offset, come back in here, let's measure that again. My magic number that I'm shooting for is 0.2275, and that's where I land, okay? You got to remember when it offsets, it's offsetting in both directions, so we got to account for that. That's why we divide by two, okay? So... Quick and easy way to get that part resized to fit my piece without changing very much anything. It kept it centered to where it is it needed to be and everything on that pin where I wanted it. And, uh, you know, I'm good. Don't need to make any further adjustment than that. Uh, the only thing adjustment that I do need to make is now that I've offset it to its proper width, right? The width was important. Now I've got to adjust my height and my length because it's now offset that additional uh length and that additional height i gotta you know when we change one thing uh it has uh you know adverse reactions on others you know and, and all so uh let's go over and let's look at one of my dividers here let's click on that divider right there and click on our size tool and the length of that divider is 8.8125 okay the height of that divider is 1.8971. So, got a very sexy looking pin here that was turned on the lathe. We're gonna, I didn't turn it, somebody gave it to me as a gift. Really nice looking though. Uh, I'm gonna write those numbers down. I got a little sketch pad here in front of me, 8.8125 and 1.8971. Those are my two numbers that I've got to, that's my goal, that's my goal to get there. Now, on this here, if I were to look at the overall length of this, if I go into the size tool, uh, my overall width in this case, sorry, the length is the width, left to right on the screen. My overall uh, width is way too long, right? But is it? Is it? Because, the reason why I'm asking is, 
I have a long piece here and I have a short piece, right? One goes from front to back, one goes from side to side. The part of the that I really need to be focusing on is that bottom groove here, right? That's that bad boy. And not this. I measured this to get that 81825 and thought, oh, you know, that's the one that goes in here. That's not the one that goes in there. That's the one that goes upright. The base, my bottom is what fits in there. All right. And my bottom is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0.25. Blah, blah, blah. All right. So <clears throat> now, uh, so what I need to make sure of is that my bottom can fit in here comfortably. And uh, notice we've got some additional length because of that offset and everything. So we've got to make some adjustments. Now, the adjustment is I'm not going to adjust it in the size. Okay. I'm not going to adjust it in, in the size tool here because when I do that, when I bring this right back down to 818, guess what's going to happen? It's going to reduce the size, but it's also going to squish this part in right here. So it's counterintuitive. What I am going to do is um, I'm going to help just use this box. Now, I'm not going to click apply or nothing, but I'm going to use this box because like a little mini calculator. And uh, so if I come in here and say, OK, this is my overall length of this part. And I need to subtract that 8.8125, which is the length that I'm shooting for and hit equal. Oops, it would help if we uh, threw a minus sign in there. 9.9516. Oh. Minus, don't put a decimal in front of that 8. 8.8125. 8 Hit that equal sign. That syntax error was saying I had a decimal in the wrong, you know, I had the wrong decimal. But that's my oversize, right? That's the that's how oversized I am. And that is the overall length oversized. Uh, and um, the and it needs to be divided by two because I got to move this in a little bit. And I got to move this in a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm using this as a calculator. That's all I'm doing. Divided by two equals. All right. So that's my magic number. That's how far I got to move this inward. Okay, so we're going to do that with the guidelines here. How do we know where we need to move to? Well, there's a couple of ways that I can do that. Number one, let me show you the node way. The node way. All right, node editing. If I select these two nodes right here, okay, if I start pulling on that node right there, it's not going to work, right? Can't just start pulling on things. Um, but uh, if I select these, now I can pull them in and out and all that stuff. And if I pull this in and I type in my magic number, which I forgot what it was. <laughs> this is why you write stuff down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 8.8125 equals wonderful divided by 2 equals. Why did I get a different number there? Oh, because I resized it like a goofball. Hold on a second. Let me get back to where I am. E's Louise divided by two. Or no. <clears throat> Minus 8.8125 equals. Wonderful. Divide that by two. No, I don't like that number. I don't like the way that looked. Did you like the way that looked? I think I hit something wrong. Come on, Lenny. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. I trust you. Oh, what am I doing here? Size tool. Okay, one more time. Minus 8.8125 equals. Got that. Put the cursor back on the end. Divide that by two. Oh, you son of a... Divide that by two. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> My mouse is typing backwards. <laughs> equals. There we go. I don't like the way that looks. You're like, how many times is he going to do this? I'm going to do this till I get it right. <laughs> and that's not right. <laughs> Here we go. This is the last time, I swear. I swear to you. Minus 
8.8125 equals. Wonderful. All right, 7031. 0.7031. I'm going to divide that by 2, and I'm going to hit equals again. And my magic number is 0.35155. Okay, now, if I come into the node edit way of things, I can select these nodes here. And as I am moving this, if I hold down, I pause right here where I'm at. That distance, if I pause keeping that left mouse button held down, I can type in my 0.35155 and hit enter, move it in. Okay, that's the keyboard shortcut way. All right, I can use that keyboard shortcut by moving it, select the nodes, move them, pause, hold that left mouse button down, type in the value, and uh, hit enter and that will type in it. It'll move that distance. Okay. So that's method number one. Okay. Method number two is using my guidelines. If I bring a guideline and snap it right to here, I can come in and right click on that guideline and say move relative to its position to the right. It's a positive number 0.35155. Create that extra guide there. Close that. And that's my goal. That's where I'm getting to. I can now come into here and I can, I have to still go into node editing. Uh, I can select these and I can drag and snap to that guideline. So either way will get me where I got to go. Okay. All right. Either one. Now, I, while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to select this. And notice there's no node right there in the middle. If I start pulling on this right now, it's going to start pulling that line. I got to click here to create that third node right there in the middle. All right. Because if I do this, it's going to start pulling, you know. So I need that point there. Either that or I need to right click and insert a point. Either one, uh, which is blank right now, but insert a point uh, and stuff. So I'm going to select those, grab that middle one, pull it inward that distance hold a pause keep that left mouse button held down and in this case i'm going now point i'm going to type in a positive number let's see if it takes me where uh to the same direction or if it moves me to the right let's find out point three five one five five is my value hit enter and move in it does not because it is uh moving it's going to move it in the direction that you pull it before you pause okay so if I were to take these guys right here and pull them up and type in 0.125 enter, it's going to move them up. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to control Y to get back there and I'm golden. Now, if I get out of node editing mode and I select my part here, now I've done that, I should be able to go to my size tool and be at the correct width that I need to be. Okay. Wonderful. All right, now my height. Now my height's a little different because on my height, I'm actually going to use a guideline for this. On my height here, uh, from the top of my board, there is a 16th of an inch groove. Groovy, dude. I'm going to snap right there. Uh, there's a 16th of an inch groove in the bottom base that the divider fits into, right? So I need to account for that 16th of an inch. So I'm going to right click come in here and I'm going to create a relative guide to this one. And this one's going down, which is a negative number. So I'm going to go negative 0.0625. That's going to be, this guideline is then going to be the kind of referencing where my groove is, you know, get your groove on. All right. I can go ahead and delete that guide out of there. That is the groove that this divider is going to sit into. And now I can adjust accordingly but first of all i need to know what height i'm at so if i come into my measure tool measure vertically from it doesn't matter uh this top piece here down to this guideline okay down to that guideline i'm at 1.8973 okay 1.8973 just wrote that number down it's right here too i don't have to really write it down Close that tool before I start throwing measurements everywhere because it's right there on the board. But now 
I need to bring this down to the proper height. And that is going to be the height of these dividers here. And they're currently sitting at a height of 1.8971. Okay, 1.8971. So only have a little bit of movement to do because I'm already sitting at 1.8973. So I only need to move 0 0.0002. Okay, so if I come in here, grab this part, go into node editing, select on it, insert a point right there select all three of these can start pulling them down straight make sure you go straight don't don't get all wonky and everything pull them straight down uh start pulling them down and i can go ahead and type in my point zero 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 two hit enter and man it moved ever so much holy camoly just that little bit but let's go ahead and take another measurement. Not, we're not tracing a picture, Laney. We're taking a measurement. We're going to go ahead and click here. Come on up to here and click. And 1.8971. Validate. I like validation. If I come over and grab my part here, go into the size tool. And 1.8971. I'm golden, right? Golden. Nice fit. Now, allowances. Uh, I want it the exact size of my part. Allowances when I'm carving and things like that, that'll be in the tool pathing side if I want to give myself a little bit of an allowance so the part fits in there and I don't have to pressure fit it and all that stuff. Guideline, I can just simply just drag it back up in there and now my part is good to go. So, all of that just because I didn't measure my material when I drew out uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the model in SketchUp. But I could have quickly, you know, in SketchUp changed the part, re-imported the files in and all that, but it's just as easy to do it here and this is what we're teaching you guys and girls, the fundamentals, how to overcome adversity, how to change things that are not correct, all that wonderful stuff. All right, so now I need to create my dog bone fillets and this part's done. So, I'm going to create my dog bone fillets. What that does is it pushes out these two corners. It gives a place for my corner piece to fit into when that um, <clears throat> when that part goes to uh, fit in here. It's going to fit nice up against that flat part, those two sides, and my corners have somewhere to go. That router bit kind of gave out that, you know, where to go. Okay? All right. <clears throat> That's what the dog bone fillets are for. So I need to do that on all of my outside corners. Wonderful. Parts done. Move on. All right. Now, hey, Lainey, can you do, since you've already done all of this, does it count for the backside too? Yeah, it does because they're exactly the same. Uh, so uh, I do not have to redo everything twice. You know, if there was something carved on the face of this or if there was some other kind of element that made this completely different from this one, you know, um, then, uh, then I would say, yeah, you know, but all of my dovetails are equal distance, uh, and, and all that wonderful stuff, uh, to prove it. If I came in here and grouped this back together, if I selected this part, hit F nine on my keyboard and I took this part and I rotated it 180 degrees and I'll just, uh, here, I'll just hit the uh, number nine on my keyboard. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Now, all of my parts should line up and everything. There's my little, I had to make my part wider, right? There's my dog bone fillets. It's wider, shorter, all that stuff and everything. Right? Golden. And all of that jazz. Okay. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel, you know. I don't. I do and I don't. All right. Uh, now, on this, let's go ahead and undo that. Boom. Just one time, just so I can move this off the table here for a minute. I'll hit the zero key to get it vertical. My OCD would kill me. No, I don't have OCD, but I, it would kill me. Have that thing at an angle for a long time. Okay. 
Now, my overall part, everything is done here, so I can count that as side one and side two, okay? Uh, and uh, all I have to be concerned about when I'm creating the tool pass is that I make sure that the correct face of my actual piece, my inside box face, right? So let's... Uh, Because I haven't decided, I haven't decided what's the top, what's the bottom, you know, you know, all that. I haven't even decided that yet. I will decide that before I carve the part. But then, you know, I need to make sure that my inside face, why am I over here? Hold on, let me get back here. That my inside face is, you know, facing up and all that wonderful stuff uh, when it's carving. Now, uh, think of like a sandwich, right? Think of like a sandwich. If I took this part here and they're opposites of each other, right? I could sandwich them together and all that stuff. But I'm going to be taking this part and flipping it like this. Not like this, but like this on the bed so that it's identically matching this one when I, you know, when I carve those two parts. Sorry, I got away from the mic and, and all that stuff, but I want to just make sure I flip it correctly. I got it orientated properly on my table once I decide what's going to be the top and the bottom. Uh, and um, and I'll be good. Okay. How many of you am I driving crazy with? Uh, I, I, I went down from 55 to 49. So they're dropping off like flies. All right. Let's, uh, that one's done. Let's go ahead and let's get into a tailboard since both of my, or a pin board since both of my tailboards are done. Let's get over here to a pin board. Okay. Now, F9 is going to center, 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 me, center me onto the board, but that's not what I want. I, all of my boards are referencing off of the corner here, so I need to align that, okay? I need to align that to the inside left, but there's nothing to align to, so I can't use the alignment tool. I have to rely on my smart snapping here. I'm going to come in and grab this corner right here and snap it right there. Okay, because it doesn't matter this overhang because this is the part that's getting cut my, my little short piece. So I'm not going to sit there and create a whole new project just for the eight inch pieces. That's why I made my design for the big piece. So the little piece will fit in there. The lids not going to get cut in here. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that piece. The base is going to get set up and cut, but that is going to be a different size board. So that'll be a little bit different project. It'll be a base project all by itself. But my other two parts here. Those little grooves, they're all going to reference off the same corner. Every all Everything except for the base here and the lid, two separate things, uh, uh, can be done on a different project, which, you know, I have that project open. We're going to talk about that inlay in a moment. All right, let's uh, let's rock and roll over here real quick and not get through this. I'll try to do this quickly. Not, not too quickly, but, you know, quickly. All right, we got a lot of vectors happening here now. And uh, so I'm going to ungroup this uh, piece. And we got to look at how these vectors are drawn, right? So we have a single vector just for this rectangle. I'm going to move it off to the side just for a minute, right? So it's like, whoa, why is that there? Because it's a three-dimensional part. So it brought in not only the back groove, which goes around. Look at this. This part is not even connected here. Let's, let's do this. Let's take this part here and let's move that up here just for kicks and giggles. And look, got this part. It looks like it's connected together, right? Just like the other one was, but it's actually not. If I select this part here, this part is actually this big piece right here. Let's move it off the board so you can see what I'm referring to. It's that part. And this little part here that was supposed to be part of that part is all by itself in you know a little box. We got to do some joining here, man. What is up with that? Uh, so let's get everything back where it was and let's figure out what vectors we're keeping, what vectors we're not keeping, what we have to cut, trim, all that stuff. Okay. Now my pin board, uh, has already been cut. My pin board has already been cut, uh, at the, um, table, the CNC table. So I don't need these vectors. Okay. I don't need a lot of these vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, these end vectors and I'm going to remove them. OK, they're just there to simulate that kind of three dimensional angle view. And I'm going to select them and get rid of them. Get them out of my way. My focus is right here. That's all I got to cut on this part is this groove. All right. Now I have these parts here 
that are creating the boundary, you know, and uh, again, if we move them off the board so you can see what that part, that vector looks like, looks like that, right? And now I have a little rectangle here. Let's move this. I'm going to split this. I'm going to explode this thing totally. We've got this part here. And then we have this part here, right? It's like, holy cow, man. What did SketchUp do to us? Well, SketchUp brought in that three-dimensional part. It was a cakewalk for here because this part was all joined together as far as this piece. You know, there was no intersecting lines or anything like that. Well, when SketchUp redrew this, let's hit undo and get it back together here. There are intersecting lines. So it drew each of these individual things as if they were an individual uh, vector. It drew a rectangle here to simulate this opening. It drew a rectangle here to simulate this opening. It drew this rectangle with this little divider in there, but it also drew this rectangle too, you know? It drew it all. So we got to get rid of some things and trim some things and all that wonderful stuff. OK, so we need to simplify the design for our needs. Number one is this little rectangle here. Delete. Gone. Don't need it. This rectangle here don't need all this top stuff, but I do need this pad boy right here. So I'm going to go into node editing mode and I'm going to cut the vector right there on that corner and cut the vector on that corner to separate this piece from the rest of it. So now I can get out of node editing mode and the rest of that, I can hit the delete on my keyboard, get rid of it. So now I have this opening here. This rectangle right here, that's the rectangle I actually need, right? So I don't need this rectangle down here. Delete it, get rid of it. I got this one here. Now I've got these two parts that I need to kind of join together. And I should be able to just take my scissors and go trim, done. And now we got our part right? You just got to get, get rid of the mess, get rid of the confusion, what parts are important, what parts are not, and uh, deal with it. Now, on this one, once again, we've got to size it up because it's too big to fit. Um, it's too big to, or, to, or my, my part is too big for this 0.1875 here. So we're going to offset it outward, right? Outward. 0.02, number still there. Love Vetric for keeping this a memory for me, uh, keeping things in memory. So all I have to do is uh, delete originals, check that off, and offset that outward, okay, to get my part back up to size. Now, I've got to resize things. Now, I only really need to resize one thing this time. The one thing that I need to resize is this part here. This part here, I want... Uh, it is not a stop groove or, uh, you know, it's not a stop groove. I need that bit to come out and cut past into this finger a little bit, uh, to give me some nice rounded edges. So I'm actually going to be going into node editing mode and I'm actually going to pull these guys. I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard this time, and I'm actually going to pull them out a little bit on that side, just so that bit can clear that edge. And I'm going to do the same thing over here with my left arrow key, pull that out just a little bit. Okay, I want that bit to cut that pocket out so I get a nice clean cut in there because this is hidden. It's not a stop dado like my front part. It's hidden when the joint gets put together. Uh, I won't see that groove because the tailboard tenon tail is going to be covering that and everything. So it's going to hide that. All right. But what is important for me is this height here. So I need to grab my ruler from grab from my ruler a guideline and snap to this point here. I'm going to right click on that guideline and move it down relative 16th of an inch. Got to love the software for remembering that for me and um, click close and get rid of that guideline. And that's going to represent my measurement here. And if I wrote down my numbers, right, rinse and repeat, wrote down those numbers, uh, I only need to move down on this, if I recall, point zero, zero, zero two and i'm using this as my measuring tool but i'm going to go ahead and go into node editing on this select that bad boy if i start moving like i said remember start pulling it's going to start doing some things so i got to add that extra node in there so i'm actually grabbing all the way across this line i'm going to pull this down pause point 
zero 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 two. Hit enter. All right. Very small movement there. But if I come in here and measure my vertical distance from this point down to my guideline here, I should be on. If I'm not on, then I got to fix my issue. And I'm not on. So I got to fix it. Did I go too many, one too many zeros? Let me look at my part here. Where I think it was, uh, what was it? Oops, get out of the measure tool here. Ugh. <clears throat> uh, point one eight nine seven one. That's my one eight nine seven one. That's what I had written down here. I thought that looked familiar. Let's see here. Did I land on my ruler? I did. I got my sixteenth of an inch there. Let's verify a couple of things. Let's make sure that uh, it wasn't my screw up. Let's click here. Click on that guideline there, and that should be a sixteenth of an inch. That's perfect. So that's not the issue. The issue has to do with what size this was probably when I drew it in SketchUp versus what it is now. So now I need to move it up. Uh, eight nine seven one. Eight nine seven one. I need to actually move it back up to where it was. I'm going to hit undo on that last thing. Undo, undo, and I'm going to measure it now that I've undone it because it was the exact distance I needed it. it seemed to be. Let's go ahead and go into our measure tool. Measure from here to here, if I'm thinking correctly. And I was thinking correctly. So I didn't need to move that part. It actually was drawn to the right size. <sighs> Go figure. The offset didn't affect it. Uh, while I'm here, let me measure my offset. I should be at 0.2275, right? Horizontal. From here to here, 0.2275. So I'm golden. Golden. All right. So that one's done. All I've got to do... <sighs> is put my fillet in, and I only need fillets this time on these two outside corners. I do not need them on here because my bit is gonna come into this clearing uh, and uh, cut that pocket. So I don't care if it's radius there. As long as my radius doesn't come back into here. And I can test that real quick. Oops, I was in the proper tool for that. If I come in here and fillet this, that's all my radius is gonna be. So it's golden, I don't need to go anywhere uh, I don't need to do anything with that because that bit's going to come right out, cut past that line into that opening and create my nice little groove. So part number two is done. Okay, let's uh, get rid of these measurements. Pull that guideline back up. Get rid of that. And that one is ready for tool pathing. Okay, I'm going to set that up here for right now. Uh, my end piece is very simple to do. Uh, all of the parts, uh, for me are going to, um, you know, pretty much be F9 working off, oh, not F9, not nine, F9 Laney. So control Z to undo that and F9 to center. And unfortunately, I don't think in my four inches, if I snap that. Can I get this one in here too? And I might just cut my little, uh, forward down to four inches wide. Oh yeah. Can I get a bit in there? Hold on a second. Um, let's snap this over to here. Let's see if I can get a bit to fit in there. I'm using an eighth inch end mill. Boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So both of those parts can fit on that little drawing. And I can go ahead and work with them one by one. All right. These are pretty simple, guys and girls. Uh, this part here is going to be fitting down onto this part, right? So all I have to do is uh, create my uh, fillets on that, and those two parts are done. So can't, can't, can't do anything with that. Why can't you do anything with that, Lenny? Why can't you click on that? Because the part is grouped. The part is grouped. We have to ungroup it. Okay. Same thing with this one. We got to ungroup it. And uh, make sure there's no overlaps or, uh, you know, extra pieces and any of that stuff. Um, doesn't look to be. Got a nice white dotted line behind there. So I should be able to come in here now and create my dog bone fillets. All right. We're ready to start toolpath in this. 
Somebody keeps texting. Are y'all texting me trying to tell me something? Am I doing something wrong? Oh, that's why everybody's texting me. Let's get backed up here. So sorry. So, so sorry. Good thing I wasn't making faces or anything while I was drawing. Let's get back into here and let's talk about what we just did. Bear with me a second here. Oh, that was a terrible waste of an hour. Okay, let's go into our undo tool. All right. Now, let me get y'all back. Uh, we're going to take uh, this part here. I have no idea where my other part went to. It just disappeared. Um, no matter how many times I hit undo, it's gone. Let me see. Let me see if I go forward. Wow, I lost my other part. Then I'm again. Yep, I lost all my undo functions. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Let's move this out of the way. Or not out of the way. Let's move this one out of the way. I'll redraw that other part. Not a big deal. I got the numbers. I got the numbers. Let's bring that tailboard back over here. Let's F9. Let me show you what exactly what I did in small screen. Let's, but let's get up close and personal this time. Lord of mercy. I was wondering why my phone was blowing up. You guys and girls are good. I need to start looking over every once in a while and, um, and I get into it. You, you don't, uh, you don't know. I was just talking. I was on a roll trying to move along and I wasn't paying attention to y'all's chat. And I know everybody's like yelling, Lenny, 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 please look over at the chat. Okay. All right. We're going to ungroup this part here and let's really quick recap what I just said. Okay. Um, this part here has multiple parts. Okay. Uh, this tailboard here. It has all these individual vectors on the side. My tailboard is, or my pin board is already, you know, cut. So I don't need these vectors here. So I'm going to delete them. Okay. These extra vectors here. Now the software, because this is a three-dimensional part brought into a two-dimensional area, it's created for all these little shapes and everything. It's created all these different shapes. Got this rectangle here. I've got this kind of uh, panel piece here. I've got this rectangle here and I've got this rectangle here and all of those together, you know, when they're exploded and everything, and then I've got my outside border. Uh, but when they're all put together, they simulate that groove that's there. So we have to isolate what parts we want to keep and what parts we don't. Okay. So everything I said still applies, but this time you can actually see it. So on the individual little rectangle, don't need it. Goodbye. On the remaining part, this big piece, I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector on that corner and cut it on that corner. Okay. That allows me to isolate that part from the rest of this and I can hit delete. Get rid of it. So now I have this one part that's open. I've got this rectangle right here, which is the one I want. This rectangle here, I don't need. So I'm going to hit delete. I'm simplifying this part. And so now I have two parts here that I do want to keep, but I need to bring them and join them together. So I'm going to click trim and join those together. All right. Awesome. Now I'm going to go into my offset tool and offset that outward, uh, deleting the original to get my size of width I need for my material. I'm going to go into node editing mode. Everything I said earlier applies, but now you're actually seeing it. And I'm simply going to use the arrow key on my keyboard and use the arrow key and bump that out a little bit. Same thing on this side. Use my right arrow key and bump that out a little bit. and that way that router bit can come out into this opening area here and create that nice groove. It's not a stop groove. And once that's done, my height, I'm going to validate my measurement. Uh, before I open up the measure tool, I'm actually going to grab a ruler. 
or a guideline and snap to this corner. Right click on it, move it down 16th of an inch. And get rid of that one. And that gives me a measuring point so I can measure from the top here vertically. From the top down to this guideline. My 18971, which is the height of my part. Okay. 18971 is my magic number. So I don't need to do anything further with that part except for go into the fillet tool. And here, let's close that tool for a minute. Let's get rid of this guideline. Don't need it anymore. Let's get rid of this measurement. Don't need it in the way anymore. Go to my fillet tool and fillet these two corners. Okay. That's it. That's all I did in that short, small screen. Then from there, all right, we'll, uh, we can move this off to the side. That's, that's this part right here that we created earlier. Uh, now I have my two pieces, right? My two parts here, my, uh, two dividers, but one of those dividers is missing, missing. And that is devastating, but never fear. I've got some vectors here that will help me. Uh, with uh, creating my, you know, um, my pieces and everything. I have some vectors that might help me with that. Or I could just go in and redraw it, making sure that things line up here in the center. I got the right heights and all that stuff. And my part was 18971, right? So I'm going to go into rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw that rectangle, making sure that the height... is 1.8971 and the length the length how dare that length uh the length is actually uh the size of this base plus a uh 3 16 on each side because that's how deep the grooves are okay so three sixteenths and three sixteenths is six sixteenths, right? <laughs> three eighths, um, right? Six sixteenths, three eighths. All right. So we're gonna go on this length here. Let's 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 close this for a minute. Let's grab our measure tool. Measure. I'll measure um, to get my layout correct. Okay, small numbers. I got to make my numbers bigger. Let's make those numbers bigger. Where's my size here? Text height, one inch. All right, let's measure that again. Boom, boom, boom. That's sexy. All right, and then measure this one vertically. Boom, boom. Okay, this is my face running along that long width. This is my width here. Uh, my focus on this is the long part, right? That's running along the face here. So this is the number plus the three eighths. Okay, it's three sixteenths on each side. That's how deep the groove is going to be. Okay, so all I have to do is knowing that eight eight one two five. I can select this, go back into my size tool. <clears throat> I'm going to unlink the X and Y right now. Uh, the height is going to be 1.8971. The width is going to be 8.8125. Okay. Now, this number is the exact number, but this one I have to add the 3 eighths to it. That's my magic number for that part. Click apply, lock it in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get this part, um, you know, here. Bam. All right. Now, these dividers are centered, right? So I'm going to take this top part here and I'm going to hold down the shift key, select this bottom part, and I'm going to go into my alignment tool and I'm going to align those two parts left to right. 
Okay, I'm also going to bring this top part down onto the edge here so that uh, I can reference this rectangle. Now, close this. And in this rectangle, okay, basically these two parts here, all right, uh, on my actual part, I don't need to guideline any of that stuff. It's basically half the distance of the height of these parts. Okay, I have it coming in right at the divider line, right at the middle. So if I come into here and grab my rectangle tool and snap to here and here, I can pull down a rectangle and the, um, just pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. Now, at this point, I want the center of this piece. Right, so if I hook, I'm just going to drag my mouse over, find that center right there. Okay, not click anything, just hover it. I'm still got my left mouse button pressed down, but I found that center. And now when I come over here and pull this down, I'll get a guideline right where it needs to be. Okay, so there's my part. All right, now I can take this part up here, move it up a little bit, take this part here and trim that away to create that part that I deleted accidentally when I got excited when you guys were like, Lainey, Lainey, trying to get your attention, bud. All right, so here's my two parts. The only thing I need to do to these two parts is add the fillets here, 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 and here. That's it. That's all I need to do. Okay? But, Lainey, that's not true. What you need to do is you've got to resize those slots just like you did the other ones. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm I want to I'm I'm trying to catch you guys off guard and all, but this part is still the 0.1875. Okay? So if I were to measure this horizontally, it's still that 0.1875. It's not the same as my uh 0.2275, right? So I got to fix that because that's how thick this material is. So, you're always thinking ahead. Always thinking, always thinking. All right, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into node editing mode, and we're going to, I'm going to make this easy. I could cut the vector right here, right? I could cut it right there, right? I'm gonna actually going to go ahead and uh, delete this span and delete this span. What? Yeah, man, sure am. I'm going to delete this one and this one. What? Yeah, sure am. Now I got these two parts like, you know, in limbo. Uh, I'm going to take these two parts right here, select them. I'm going to go in here and offset both of those outward, 2.02, deleting the original. Bam. But watch what happened. Did you see what happened? Look at that. One went big, one went small because the start point is on two different sides. So undo, right? Now I could, you know, blah, 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 change the start point and all that, but I'm just simply going to go here and offset that one. Look at that. It's going outward because the start point is in a different place than this one. So actually I have to inward this guy. Inward. Weird, huh? Yeah. This one is outward. Perfect. All right. Now, all right, Lainey, show us the magic. I'm just kidding. Now I'm going to select these two top parts here and join with a straight line once, twice, three times a lady. All right. One more time. Select this and this. Join with a straight line once, twice. Done. Now I can come in and create my fillet. All right. So we're always moving ahead. We're always, you know, thinking. And do make sure that you, if you have to make changes, that those changes are universal, okay? That you made those changes for everything. All right. How many of you still with me? 50 of you. Hey, welcome, guys and girls. All right. Let's take a break for just a second here. This is going to allow me to sweat and had to let my ears air out for a second. That's hot in here. Uh, Got to turn the air on. Um, Sorry about that. I apologize for not uh, seeing the screen while I was doing those drawings uh, and uh, wasting that much time uh, having to recap and go back and stuff. Uh, so, you know, not enough 
seven up or sprite or whatever. All right. So I appreciate that and everything. Um, let's see here. Let me see here. Uh, um, we need some kind of alarm where you guys can. Uh, and, and and for all of you that were text messaging me, I greatly appreciate that. Laney, big screen. Laney, big screen. Laney, big screen. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we got to come up with a second solution because I do not. I totally ignore my phone. Um, but what I'm going to start doing is if I hear that phone go off during a class, then it will make me stop and look. So there we go. Uh, Charles Wallace uh, asked a very important question, said, hey, on that part you deleted, can you just import it again? I absolutely could, Charles. I could import that project again and delete everything except for that one part. Uh, but since it was a simple part, it was just simple enough for me to uh, redraw it. But if it were to been a complicated part, I would have absolutely re-imported it in. So, um, you know, you know, you know, you know. All right. So our fit and finish, everything is good. These two parts are fitting into one another uh, and uh, they're going to fit into that divide and everything. So they're going to fit right at the center line of the part. Uh, they're going to fit uh, like a little cross um, and everything. All right. Ah, Laney Big Screen. That's going to be my Hollywood name, right? That's my Hollywood name, Laney Big Screen. <laughs> all right. Different ways of learning uh, some of the same steps, right? Different methods and all. So very uh, simplistic. Now it's time to start toolpathing. Uh, we're not going to do anything with the, um, the base. Uh, actually, I could do it with the base here, and then I could just uh, copy and paste it into a different project. So let's do that real quick. On the base here, uh, we're going to ungroup this. I'll do it right here. Let's get into big screen right here. Uh, I won't bring it into that project, but I will do the vector work here, and then I'll just copy and paste it into a new window here in just a second. On this guy right here, we're going to ungroup him. And on this, on this group, we have... Um, what did what did SketchUp or what did Vetric create from the SketchUp model because it is a three-dimensional design? Well, let's drag this over. We got this cross here, right, that it created. Uh, we've got this rectangle here, this rectangle here. You know the routine. The other two are rectangles, and then we have a borderline, right? So we got to get rid of the things that we don't want, uh, keep the things that we do, all right? And for this project, the thing I do want is the cross. The things I do not want are the rectangles. So I'm going to go through and select each of these individual rectangles one by one, and I'm going to delete them. So all I have is the cross and the boundary. Okay, cross and boundary. That's what I want. All right. Now, these are going to be uh, grooves cut a sixteenth of an inch deep into the base of this uh, board here. And um, <clears throat> this bad boy is you know why I paused? Guess why I paused. This base is the same size as my individual slats that are fitting into the grooves and everything. So uh, the width of 8.8125 is all that this one needs to be. Uh, that point eight one, eight point eight one two five. Uh, so I have it drawn too long. Good catch there. All right. So once again, um, I need to subtract my eight point eight one two five. All right, to get that number, that three eighths. Remember, I made it three eighths inch bigger. Right. So I need to move each of these sides in three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, so node editing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, insert a point on this middle point and grab all of this. Just going to drag it in and type in 0.1875, enter. Insert a point here. By the way, the keyboard shortcut is the letter I for insert a point if you just hover your mouse over the line. 
Uh, I'm going to pull this one in to the left and 0.1875 enter. Uh, I'm going to get out of node editing mode. I'm going to snap my part uh, back to the corner. That keeps everything nice and centered. And uh, my size now should be 81825 because uh, that is exactly the same size as the base, which is what it should be. I don't know why I added the 3 16th inch in. I, I don't know what I was thinking. All right. So on this guy here, we got to do an offset for him. We got to offset him outward. Uh, 0.02, delete the original. Okay. And on this one, uh, this is not going to be a stop uh, dado or a stop groove. It's going to be a through. Uh, and uh, I don't want to just sit here and pull on this to pull that out, right? What am I doing? I'm stretching it and everything. I don't want to pull it out past that border line, that boundary line. Uh, I need to go into node editing and I got to work with these uh, together, you know, one at a time. So I'm just going to use my arrow keys. I'm just getting that vector to go past that base up arrow key. Select these two, right arrow key. Oops, I don't need to go out that far. Not that far. Good. This one don't need to go out that far. Don't get too heavy on the outward. And this one's the down arrow key. Bring that out just a little bit, just so that bit can go nice and past all of that. And uh, that vector is done for the tool pathing that I need to do. So uh, now that it's done, what can I do with it? I can go ahead and copy this. Copy. I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click on my little Vetric icon down here and open up a new window. <clears throat> I'm going to create a new file. And I'm just going to, uh, for right now, create a uh, project that's 9x9 nine nine because I know it's 8x7 something. 9x9 uh, nine by, nine by 3 by point. 2275 is the actual thickness of it. Um, click on that. And then I'm going to right click and paste. And then I can go ahead and F9 to center it. And then I can size my project appropriately. So my actual size of my project should be that 81825 by 7 and an 8. Okay. So. Okay, get that sized appropriately and then i can go ahead and once again select everything f9 center it on there and uh this project is ready for tool pathing now it didn't i i hit f9 to center but it didn't center it because one little leg here is taller than the other so you can't take that for granted that f9 is going to center that so i need to use uh i'm going to double click on this Grab that corner, use my smart snapping and snap it to that corner. Snap it in here to that corner. Uh, get it perfectly centered. Okay. All right. All right. This, as long as I center it to the material. Okay. I'm centered because that overlap, it's going to cut past the material. It's cutting that groove. No, nothing special with this. This is a pocket tool path. We'll go ahead and create this one since we're here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit file save because I haven't saved none of this stuff. So file save as and in my class file here, dovetail class file, this is going to be my uh, box bottom panel. Good enough for me. All right. Hit save. I know what it is. And I'm going to create my tool path. My tool path. Uh, the cut is going to be a sixteenth of an inch deep. I'm going to be using an eighth inch end mill for this. Uh, so we'll come down and select my eighth inch end mill. Uh, I'm going to just do it as a offset cut. Round and around she goes. Uh, so uh, that'll be more optimized. And this is going to be my bottom panel pocket. I do not like spaces and file names, so... On a pocket, and it's a 0.125 mil. Calculate. 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 Darn it. <laughs> All right. Preview that selected tool path, and there we go. 
nice little uh, groove that's going to get cut into the bottom panel of the box. That file is done. All I have to do is save that toolpath and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just close this right now. Hit yes to save the changes. That bottom panel is done. Never need to address it again. I can go ahead and close out of that and come back to here. All right, let's start eliminating some of this stuff. I don't need that in this project anymore. This is my lid right here, right? I've already got the lid sized and the lid is already in here because we're going to be doing a very quick V-carve inlay here in a second. And so I don't need to, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel there. So I can go ahead and delete that. I don't need it. Okay. Uh, as far as the parts that are getting toolpath, basically I need a front, a side, and my two dividers here. Uh, the others are, you know, if they were distinctly different in some way or another, and I needed to carve all four parts, I would, but all I need to do is create the two tool paths and run them on the appropriate parts. So I don't need this and get rid of it. Don't need this and get rid of it. Okay. So for this, our tool path is going to be a profile cut. Okay. Our profile cut and everything. Cut those parts out. Uh, profile toolpath, uh, it's going to be cutting uh, 0.2275 inches deep uh, with an eighth inch end mill. It's going to be cutting on the outside of the line. All right. I am not going to give it any kind of allowance. I think the two parts would fit together pretty well, but well, let's, uh, you know, I say that and then they're going to be tight as all be it. So let's go ahead and give it an allowance. So I'm going to go negative 0 0.002, my magic number that I like. I'm going to, this is my dividers. And it's a 0 0.125 mil. And I'm actually going to have a part. Uh, I'll cut a piece of my panel board that's going to make the dividers. I'll cut it uh, four inches wide by, you know, eight inches or 10 inches long, 10 inches long. And I will actually cut the parts out of that piece. All right. Calculate that. No selected vectors. Of course not. Hit calculate. Okay. And, uh, you know, I can't pre if I preview the selected toolpath, it's not going to cut all the way through because, you know, it's a three quarter inch board, but you'll get the idea. Uh, so just realize it's not cutting all the way through. In my actual part, it's going to be cutting all the way through, but not in here. So, all right, that's going to be my two panels, my two little dividers. Okay. If some of you, if that just confused the shit out of you, what I just said there, let me change this part to 0.2275 real quick. Hit calculate or hit OK. Don't want to recalculate. Go into preview and preview that selected toolpath again. And once again, like I said, uh, these are going to be my uh, two parts. Okay, my two dividers. All right. Now I will be using double side tape uh, or cams on this. Uh, I'll probably have double side tape as well since they're such small parts. Um, and uh, I do not need any tabs, nor do I want any tabs and everything. So that will be the two parts. Now. Let's go back to make sure I change this back to my proper, proper thickness of my material for the other parts. And when it asks me, I'm not going to recalculate the toolpath. That does not need to be recalculated. All right. So that's done. All right. I'm going to go ahead and move them to a new layer and call this my dividers. I'm going to make that layer invisible and click OK so it goes away. And I'm going to take my next part here and get it onto the board. I'm just going to drag and snap. Snap to that corner. All right, this one, uh, no profile cut or nothing like that. This is a pocket cut. It's also cutting uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch deep, uh, 0.1875. That's how deep it's cutting uh, with an eighth inch end mill. On that bad boy right there, I'm going to go ahead and I don't need a ramp on this one. I'm going to go ahead and this is my uh, pin board cuts and board, uh, board cuts, uh, nothing fancy with the name. One, two, five, end mill, calculate, 
preview that toolpath, that selected toolpath, and there we go. Doesn't that just look good as all be it? Now, of course, you know, the part is uh, already going to be sized. We already cut the dovetails on it and everything and the pins and all. So, you know, you got to use your imagination. That, that's just going to be a groove in one in both of my side pieces. Okay. My pin board. My pin board. All right. So gonna right click and move this to a new layer call this my pin board vectors and i'll put a space in that make it invisible because i don't need to see it anymore click ok and it goes away all right last one let's select this i'm gonna hit f9 on the keyboard get that centered because it's the full board size and everything and once again, not cutting a profile cut on this or anything. Those parts are already cut. I'm just cutting this groove in here. So this is going to be a pocket tool path. Cutting three sixteenths of an inch deep with my eighth inch end mill. Going to call this my tail board. And calculate, oh, select your vector first. Oh, it's grouped together. Ungroup. Now select your vector. Calculate. All right. Reset that preview. Preview that selected toolpath. <clears throat> Got that little 3 16 of an inch groove there. That's going to be in my tail board. And that part is done. All right. So that is all we had to do after importing the design into the Vetric software. We had to create our tool pass. Sometimes you end up with more than three. I have three very simple cuts for this. Uh, my divider is going to be cut out of my point. My, my divider is going to be cut out of my panel board. Uh, and it's going to be 0.225 inches thick. Uh, and uh, it's gonna, this is going to cut those out. Uh, and then my pin boards are going to go on the table. Do that groove. My tail boards are going to go on the table. Do that groove. And we're done. All right. With that. So I'm going to go ahead and file save as. Uh, and I'm going to just call this for right now. I'm going to call this my dovetail box groove and dividers. Throw it in there and hit save for the design. Let that save. And then I'm going to close out of this and I'll come back and do the save the tool pass later. Uh, you're just going to, you know, open up the save tool path button, choose your appropriate post processor for your machine, and you will save each of these files individually one at a time. You'll have three different tool paths for this. You will have one tool path for the bottom panel, uh, that bottom panel project. No, you'll have that one tool path. And then, of course, uh, now we're going to have our top lid. All right. How are you guys and girls doing? Let's take a minute here and let's see if you guys are, uh, your minds are okay. You can handle another 30 minutes or so with me on doing V carve inlay um, and, uh, and all that stuff. So the um, question uh, Stephen asks is, hey, will you be cutting this out on Thursday? Uh, yes, that's the plan. Doing the V carve inlay and all the cuts and everything on Thursday. Do, uh, I'll probably do a dry assembly for you guys and everything. And then, uh, you know, and all that. I might do a finish on Friday. I don't know. Uh, but, we'll de yeah, we're definitely doing the cuts and everything on the CNC machine on Thursday at 7 p.m. Join me. Same time, same channel. Uh, so you guys are still hanging in there. Your minds are okay for a minute. Do you need to go grab some coffee, tea, a beer, whatever? You know, float your boat. Um, we're going to get into V-Carve Inlay. And now I'm going to... Tax your brain just a little bit. Not much, but just a little. It's not going to tax your brain. I'm just going to show you the concept of what a V-carve inlay is and how it how it works and all and stuff. So uh, as long as y'all are good, we're good. We're going to go ahead and jump right back into it. Uh, Papa Do, Papa 7-Up, Papa Sprite, Papa Dr. Pepper, whatever you got. And let's make this happen. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, <laughs> Spindleini, yeah, router Bob and Spindleini. Is that how it goes? Uh, router Bob over there at Shop Saber. 
Old router bob. All right, let's get back into it. Stretch my wings a little bit. All right. And and hey, guys, I'm actually hearing myself talk too, so I know how annoying it can be after a while. We're going to try to get this done as quickly as possible. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Dean, let's get uh, Stephen. So, yes, Stephen, Thursday, 7 o'clock, we're going to go ahead and do those cuts show you how I clamp everything to the board and all that stuff. Um, talk about some, you know, my double side tape or, you know, I don't have any CA glue in the shop, so I'm not going to do the two sided tape, you know, the, the, the painter's tape with the CA glue method. I'm just going to use double side tape a little bit messier, but it works. Um, all right. So here we go. Let's get back on over to it. Large screen screen up. Wow. Okay. Now what we're going to do with a V carve inlay on this lid on the box lid and everything. What my thinking is, is I'm going to offset. I didn't offset this vector yet. I'm going to offset this rectangular vector right here. Uh, I'm going to offset it outward about a quarter of an inch. And I don't know why I typed a one when I said a quarter of an inch. Um, and I want sharp corners and I'm going to create that offset. And what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have an inlay band around here with this inlay. And it's going to be all out of the same material. So I'm going to have cherry is my lid. And I think a maple inlay would be a nice contrast to the cherry because the lid has got a real deep uh red to it uh and i think the maple the white maple uh i'll use uh probably a hard maple uh i think it will stand out from that lid very well um you know if this box would have been uh you know walnut or something like that then maple would absolutely stand out i believe it'll stand out nice off the cherry as well uh i could go darker like a walnut inlay or something like that, but i think that you it wouldn't stand out as much and you wouldn't see it so i'm going to use maple so there's going to be a banded inlay around here and then this area here. Now, when you are creating a V-carve inlay, you have your female cut, which is the pocket cut. And you have the male part, which is uh, the part that fits into the pocket. Male fits in the female. Okay. We all learned that in like whatever grade they started teaching sex ed. All right. So. What we're going to do now is what or the key thing is, is the female pocket. OK, which are going to be this guy and these two guys right here. They're going to be cut out and pocketed out. There is going to be uh, typically. Um, it's a V carb toolpath and it starts at zero, the top of our board. And then it's going to cut down to a certain depth. We're going to limit the depth. Uh, this could be whatever depth you want it to be. But the key and crucial thing is that the depth does not exceed the cutting flute, the blade, the cutter, the, the, the carbide, whatever you want to call it, does not exceed the cutting depth of the V-bit. All right. So uh, an example, case example. All right. Let me switch back over to little old me the white side focus focus the white side 1541 60 degree v bit let me open it up the white side 1541 60 degree v bit focus focus can you focus Come on, let me get my camera. Focus. I don't know. All right, anyway, here, you focus, whatever. All right, the cutting tip, all right, the cutting tip. I'll try to just put my hand back there. Here, hold on. Wait, hold on. I got something. We'll use this. All right, <clears throat> where are we at here? The cutting tip, all right, that blade. From the tip down to the cutter is 0.2188. Okay, that's the cutting height of that tool. Okay. Once I start to exceed that cutting height, I'm getting into the shank. All right. And 
if I exceed the cutting depth of that bit, then my V cut mail, which should be a nice ramp from the top to the bottom, is going to have a little straight edge lip at the top. You can't fit a square peg into a V-shaped hole. All right. So whatever V bit you use, whatever cut depth you want, how thick you want your inlays to be, and all that stuff, because you might be doing a cutting board and you want your inlay pretty deep because you might be inlaying a part and then cutting that and inlaying another part of a different contrasting material and making this very complex inlay and everything. And we don't want air gaps. We don't want glue gaps. We don't want voids and all that stuff in our inlays and all. So that cutting depth, we want it, you know, a nice, good, thick inlay, you know, nice, good thickness and all, but we don't want to exceed the cutting depth of our bit or it's game over. You're not going to fit that part in. Okay. And so for my back to uh, the design here, I'm going to be using that 60 degree uh, 1541 V bit, which has a cutting depth of 0.2188. And my cutting depth, I am limiting that to a 0.2. Okay. I'm not going to exceed the cutting depth of my bit. And the vectors, uh, these two vectors here, you know, they're going to get you know, laid out however you want them. I have a nice little, nice little decorative design. I think that's going to be a pretty maple inlay in the lid of this cherry box. I think it would look good. Uh, and we're going to create that tool path. And this is going to be our female pocket. All right, let's... Uh, you know, I'm not even, I'm not even stressing the spaces right now. 60 D E G V bit. Um, the, uh, this is going to be my female pocket here. Uh, and it's going to be using a 60 degree V bit. We're going to hit calculate. And the, oh. <laughs> uh, I was doing uh, something for the uh, screenshot. The um, why, why does it say exceeding my material thickness? Because, and why does it say my material is only uh, one eighth inch deep? Because when I created this design, I had to cut out this part an eighth of an inch thick and lay it on this block. So it looks like the inlay when I was trying to show the female, the male and the male. And I forgot to, uh, Rechange the design size. Sorry. Let's get back to where we are here. So my job setup, my part is actually 0.625 inches. Uh or I'm sorry. How thick is my lid? Oh, it's uh my my lid's actually three quarters. Uh 0.375. Ah, shoot. 0.75, Lenny. All right. So let's fix that. Okay. No. All right, once again, point two, I'm going to select my vectors that are going to get V carved. That's my pocket. I'm using my eighth inch 60 degree V bit. And this is my female pocket. V, V, E, G, V bit. Okay. We're going to go down and calculate that tool path. Okay. Um, the uh, tool path, if we preview that visible tool path, uh, it's going to cut out the female receiving end of this inlay. Okay. And that point two, that is the depth that we're limiting it to and everything. It doesn't need to go any further than that. All right. So, but point two is going to be our magic number. That's the number we're going to try to hit, not try. That's the number we're going to hit with our male. All right. And so we've got our female here. Now, we are going to take this design here. Notice I grabbed an extra vector that was hiding from us there. And that's, I, wanna, I, want, I want that. I want that. Uh, but we're going to take uh, this design here. Uh, we'll turn off that vector for right now. And we're going to put that onto a layer. And I'll just call it female, right? We have our female layer. Now, we're also going to take this design. And that rectangle there, and we're going to copy that to the mail layer. All right, the mail layer. Now I have two layers created, female and male. 
and now my mail layer actually has multi designs on here um one of them is uh the mirrored one and one of them is not because i already had this design all laid out and stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh delete everything that's on here from scratch go back to my female select all the vectors even my outside border that i drew and copy that to that mail layer okay now the trick with any v-carve inlay is the mail gets mirrored okay the mail gets mirrored so i want to make sure i'm in my mail layer i've got my vectors here i'm very simply going to select these vectors and i'm going to go into the mirror tool i want to flip it about its job center and i want to flip it horizontally Okay, I want to mirror it horizontally. Think about two slices of bread coming together. All right, male, female, when they come together, you know, that's going to be our inlay. So our female, our male has to get mirrored so they fit together. All right, little visual effects for you there. All right, so now that it's mirrored, I want uh, on my part here, I want my bit to go uh, when it's clearing out all of this flat area and everything. I want it to be able to go past my boundary a little bit. Uh, if, if, if uh, you know, on the male part, the contrasting material, uh, I'm most likely going to cut it to the same size as my, my other lid. And so I want the bit to come past there. If not, then I'm, I need to cut those four edges off at the end of the game. So I, what I'm going to do is I want the bit to be able to go past the edges. I'm going to go ahead and offset that outward a sixteenth of an inch, which is plenty. Um, doesn't have to be sharp corners. Uh, I'm going to delete the original border here. And that way I have that little cut right there. And the secret to the mail cut is that the mail V-carve toolpath has been mirrored and we have some sort of boundary around the design that is getting inlaid and this is the boundary that we're going to be using this boundary here that way it creates a reversed mirror effect for those of you that are new to v-carve a v-carve toolpath cuts between the lines so when we selected just these two lines here and our design that bit was cutting out the female pocket between the lines well, when we add an additional line into the mix, now it's cutting between these two lines, leaving, cutting between these two lines, leaving this area raised, which is my band that's got to fit into the female. It's going to leave this area raised here. Um, it's going to cut around these two lines between this line and the outside of my border here. And then it's going to leave that middle area raised because that's what's fitting into that female pocket. So it creates that reversed effect. Now, the key thing about the V-carve toolpath for the male is that it has a start depth. And that male start depth is important um, in what it could be. Now, our total goal is to hit 0.2, but we have to add the start depth and the finish depth together, the flat depth together to equal 0.2. And what I am going to encourage to you is that we do not have a shallow start depth, that we have a deep start depth. In this case, my start depth is going to be 0.18. And my flat depth is going to be 0.02. Right? Deep start depth, low flat depth. Okay? And that total, 0.18 plus 0.02, equals a total of 0.2, the cut depth of my female, the cut depth of my female. Why is this the case? Why do we have to do that? Well, I'm so glad that you asked because I am going to explain it to you. And this is where the taxing of the brain comes into play. All right. So first things first, for those of you that might not be able to see uh, bright colors and everything, we're going to kind of go uh, and change some colors here. Um, we're going to go into our layers and let's <clears throat> go with a uh, black <clears throat> on that one and uh, black on that one. There we go. Nice black color. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about our female cut first 
female cut first, okay? Now, in this example, the start depth is zero, and the cut depth or the flat depth is 0 0.3, right? Mine's 0 0.2 because I'm, I don't want to exceed the cutting depth of my bit's cutter, right? The cutting head of my bit. So mine's 0 0.2, but in this example, it's 0 0.3, and that's fine. Uh, you know, whatever your depth is, as long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't exceed uh, the cutting depth of your cutter and get into that straight away. You know, those half inch cutters have that nice little straight edge that comes up, you know, cause, uh, you know, it, you can cut deep and then get that nice little groove, you know, for nice little profile edges and things like that. Well, we don't want to go past the V. All right. So we don't want to exceed our cut depth. In this case, it's 0.3. So what that means is is from the top of my board from zero from zero that v bit is going to come down and be you know stepping it you know whatever pass depth it is it's going to be cutting out that pocket of that female cut until it reaches that flat depth in this case that flat depth of 0.3 so this little void right here is basically like a half cut view of our pocket cut, right? That's our female. That's kind of, we're looking inside of the cut right now, this little area right in here, all right? So start depth of zero, flat depth of 0 0.3, all right? So that, for my little boys and girls, that is going to be this part here, right? Our female cut. That's our little pocket. Okay. A little pocket there. Now let's talk about a cut depth, a male cut depth with a shallow start depth and a deep flat depth. Okay. Which I'm going to encourage that we do not do because that's where we lead to glue gaps, air voids, uh, all those kind of things. All right. Um, you, you, if you were doing an inlay inside of an inlay, say you had a piece of cherry, you're inlaying a uh, piece of maple, and then inside that piece of maple, you're going to do some detail inlay of walnut, right? Really three contrasting colors. And I inlay that maple into that cherry and I have a big start depth and small flat depth, you know, to get my point three. Uh, and everything, then I'm going to end up with a air gap or a void. And when I go to cut that middle out to put my walnut in there, I'm not going to be very happy uh, about that void and all that wet glue and things in there that's just sitting there just puddled up and all that stuff. All right. So let's understand uh, the, uh, the purpose of this. All right. Here's a male cut with a start depth of 0.1 and a flat depth of 0.2 totaling 0.3. This is, in my eye, going to be the the no-no way, okay? We're going to go the no-no way. All right, so in my material here, uh, let's get my V-bit up here and all. Uh, and uh, if I have a, you know, start depth of the uh, cut of zero, you know, then, uh, you know, cutting down to 0.3, well, when I, when I cut down, um, I'm creating a much wider area than what's supposed to occur uh, on the cut. I have an, a, a wrong offset. So let's illustrate this a little bit better. All right, so we are going to have a start depth. That means that bit is actually going to be starting down here uh with a cut depth of 0.3 so let me back that up and put it back where it was here so that bit is going to be offsetting because it cuts on the right side of the bit it doesn't you know cut from the tip the tip is always offset from the cut this is the outer boundary of my design okay this is that outer boundary of the design the edge of the bit is going to be cutting you know based on uh that profile we're always cutting on the right side of the edge all right. Well, if I have a start depth of 0 0.0, oops, I moved the wrong vector. Hold on a second. I moved the wrong vector. Snap that up there. If I have a start depth of zero, then my offset, you know, is, you know, not very much here. Um, but what I uh, 
end up with is I'm going to end up with most likely an oversized part uh, or w what have you. Um, but the start depth of 0.1 is going to bring, and let me bring the bit down. Let me bring the bit and snap it over here. What that's going to do is that's going to start the cut of my V, the outside of my right bit, not way up here at zero, but at point 0.1. Now the software is looking at this as the outer edge of my bit. And it's creating that uh, cut starting at point 0.1 and ending at point 0.3. Which, am I down on the, Oh, I'm not done on point 0.3. Hold on. Boop. Let me snap down to point 0.3 there. Uh, and let me snap this back over where it's supposed to go. All right. Uh, so this is my cut. Now, remember, this is the V cut around the outer edges. Remember the part is getting cut in all of this open space around the outer edge to this. So when we're looking at this, all of this is the waste area out here. This part in between the two V bits here, that's my male piece. And to better simulate that, let's go here. And this is the male part. All that waste area is getting milled away around that male part. And my male part is getting left. Now, from here on that male part and everything, the total cut, the total cut is 0.3 inches, you know, from the top to the, you know, where it flattens out, that flat depth, 0.3, total cut and everything. But how that part is angled based on the offset of the bit and where it's starting, not up here, but actually down here on that point one, the edge of the bit and everything, that is what takes this male part, if I transfer it over to here, which I've got, I've got a... 0.1 start depth, 0.2 cut depth or flat depth, if you will, on this very wide start depth and all. And I've got my female started at zero to 0.3. Well, when I go to put that female and that male together, there is only so far those two parts are going to be able to fit. I can actually bump it down just a little bit more. Let's bump her down until she's bumping in and I've got this thing clamped and pressed. Well, all of this right here is glue gap airspace void. Okay. All that is void right in here. That is uh, that female has been cut out to 0.3 from zero. That male has been cut out with a start depth of 0.1 flat depth of 0.2 or point, you know, yeah, 0.2 uh, for a total cut of 0.3. But it's only because where we started from and that offset inward, it can only fit so far together. What we want, ideally, is that we want a very big start depth. Okay? So what that's going to do by doing that, this is my part vector here, okay? What that's going to do by having a, in this case, it's a 0.28 start depth and a 0.02 flat depth for my finish off. When that bit comes down and it's clearing out that part and everything, um, my 0.28 start depth, which is right here, this line, I don't have it marked and all, the edge of that bit on that part and all is going to create a very shallow kind of cut. Now, this whole thing right here, you know, is, is my cut, right? But it's cutting down to here. And if we look at the difference between the two, if I take my same pieces, just this one has a larger start depth and I snap them together, you can see the offset of the bit is much greater when we have a deeper start depth then a shallower one. This is the shallow start depth. This is the deeper one. And when we take that into account and we bring it over to our female part, which has not changed whatsoever, and we bring those two pieces together, we are filling the gap now. 
So now we have that 0.02 glue gap in there, much shallower. We got much more inlay to go into that piece that fits. Uh, the two pieces fit together much tighter, and we have a very minimal gap here, which is just the perfect amount of gap for glue, 20 thousandths of an inch glue gap. Now, I don't know if that made sense to you guys or if you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Um, there is a great explanation from Becky at Vetric on this V-Carve Inlay. If you visit the Vetric YouTube channel uh, and you look at Becky's um, tutorial on V-Carve Inlay, she explains this on a multiple part inlay. And also every single one of you that have Vetric, right? Every single one of you that have Vetric can go to your help menu. And if you go down to your account, Vetric, visit Vetric's user portal, right? And you go to your account and you log in. Stand by a second. Let me get to uh, the account here. All right, let me pull this over on the screen. In your Vetric account, okay, in here you have all kinds of different tutorials and all, but there is one there that's called In the Labs right here. And in this tutorial, In the Labs, in this little gallery of fun free projects and stuff, there is a project here. And Becky's been in the labs quite a bit. Um, let's see here. Where is Becky's in the lab on her inlay? I think it was prior to the cribbage board. Where's she at? There's the flower. She's been a busy girl, Becky has. Becky and the gang over there. Let me get down to it. Becky, where'd you move that tutorial to? It might not be in the labs anymore. She might have moved it right over. Okay. So I don't think it's in the labs anymore. It used to be, but let's go to uh, YouTube real quick. Let's go over to in the, wow, not real quick, evidently. Um, it used to be in the labs. I don't know why they move things around. All right. So if we type in Vetric, hey, Spindle TV is live right now. Click subscribe. Click like. All right. Uh, Vetric, e carve, inlay, inlay. We go to Becky's tutorial right here. Um, Becky, uh, she shares her exploration of a V-carb inlay and she was doing multiple inlays, uh, you know, this little planted flower thing where there's one inlay on top of the other on top of the other. And she uses the same graphics that I just showed you here to explain, uh, her process and, and how she came to determine this and all this stuff and which there's no... It's it's just reality how it is, but how it affected her project with that big old glue gap when she was trying to do that inlay inside of inlay inside of inlay. We want minimal gappage, okay? So good size start depth, minimal flat depth. These numbers could be anything that you want them to be. If you didn't want to go, in my case, on the mail, if I didn't want to go 0.18, I could go, hey, you know what? 0.15, right? And then 0.05 for the you know five thousand seven inch but that's going to give me a sixteenth of an inch gap i'd much rather go much deeper on the start depth and have a very minimal blue gap okay 102 it's got to equal these two numbers have to equal the amount of the female's flat depth okay 0 0.18 102 equals 0 0.2 for my cuts so when we calculate this tool path and I forgot to name it, but that's okay. <clears throat> we come in here and we preview that visible toolpath. 
but I do encourage you guys and girls to check out that um, that uh, video Becky does. She probably does a much better job explaining it uh, than I do, um, but she uses the same uh, graphics. Uh, they, they those graphics were actually um, borrowed from her for my explanation. So uh, better get you know to get it from you know more than one more than one source right and uh maybe one makes more sense than the other <laughs> all right so now all of the wood on this contrasting piece of materials getting milled away around that design and that design is left raised and the reason why i had the router bit go beyond the wood here is so that I can take my male part and just glue and snap it right into my female part, clamp them together and wait till the glue dries. Um, if I would have not let the bit go past the edge, then I would have had to make sure I can cut those edges off with a bandsaw, handsaw, table saw, whatever, cut those edges off because I need to be able to create this part and sandwich it into the other one. Uh, I don't want any lips or anything, you know, edges or anything keeping me from fitting these parts in as tight as they can go. Now, all right, we want that nice V shape inlay and that nice V cut is going to fit right into that female inlay just perfectly. We're going to have some nice big pieces for the wider parts, for the narrower parts. It'll be a thinner inlay, probably about an eighth inch or so, what have you. But um, we're going to have a nice, good, beautiful inlay, that nice rim around the edge. Uh, is uh, going to fit in perfectly and stuff, and we're going to have a pretty inlay. Um, now, what would have happened? What would have happened if I would exceeded would have exceeded the cut depth of my cutter? Right. Let's say that I would have set my female to a you know point three. Let's assume we did. I'm not going to, but let's say in my male here, I have to total point three now, right? And I'm only using the sixty degree V bit with a cutting depth of 0.2188 well all right i got to equal 0.3 so i'm going to go 0.28 and 0.02 right no, that's all i'm doing right there right calculate let's calculate this out let's reset this preview and preview the visible toolpath and you remember, keep the visual what that nice V cut looked like a moment ago on that male with the proper cut depth and everything. Um, but this time, even, even on the outside edges, watch as it's cutting in these edges. You see that straight edge lip right here? That is my shank colliding with my material. There is no cutter on that shank at all. And so that is my shank colliding with that material and everything. And it's going to be a bad day. I'm going to be pushing material around. I'm going to be doing all kinds of stuff. Now, if I was using a 60 degree V bit with a half inch head, uh, I have a cutting height on that cutter of, uh, I think it's like point, uh, three and some change, uh, to the V, not to the straight edge, to the V and everything. But, um, you know, um, uh, I'd be fine. Right. You know, so my V bits important, the size of my pocket cut for my female and my male and all those cut depths are based on the bit that I'm using. And I happen to be using the quarter inch 60 degree white side, 1541 with a 0.2188 cut cutter, you know, cutting head, cutting, cutting depth, if you will. All right. So let this, uh, let this mill away, but look at that straight edge there, you know, that straight edge right there and everything right here, this nice straight edge. Okay. Let this finish cutting out. Let it finish cutting out these parts and all that wonderful jazz in a row. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, if we look at our parts here, what do we have on the top of our parts? We have all of that wood that, oops, oops, sorry. Hold on. Let me get you back into full view here. We have all that straight wood that was beyond the cutter's cutting depth here that's not V cut. And that straight lip of wood is not fitting into my female, female V. I can't even get down to these parts that are V because they're shallower, you know, skinnier and everything. But my bigger parts, that part's not going to fit in. 
can't fit a square peg into a v-shaped hole you know what i mean so we need that we need that nice cone shape so we need to make sure that we don't exceed our cutting depth of our cutter or that inlay is not going to happen even on the outside edge here if we were to closely examine the outside edge uh let's see if a better let me see if i can find a better angle i should have probably turned up the volume on the uh pixelation here so it would be a little bit more clear for you but on this lip here my v stops right about here where that light tan area is and then this is all straight meat right that straight meat that you know it it's not gonna it's not gonna go it'll go down in there probably but it's not gonna it's holding there all my other parts up in the air know what i mean so this if you get that straight edge there, you've exceeded your cut depth on your bit and that inlay is not going to work. Okay. Now, Lainey, hey, can I, if I do do that by accident or something, can I run this through a planer uh, or, or a drum, uh, you know, my, my drum sander and bring it down to that V? Uh, probably could. The only thing is, is some of these parts, some of these parts here are super fragile here and the last thing you want is your planer or your drum center or what have you chipping out a chunk here that's going to chip out that chunk in your inlay especially now this inch this this design here is not very intricate as far as the detail you can get some super sexy detail on things like shell on a guitar neck you know uh you know uh or not shell but you know um oh you can v-carve uh create like a resin sheet uh cut some resin parts out and resin uh dry hard resin and make it an inlay for a guitar neck whatever all kinds of stuff all kinds of intricate little little things in those parts are crucial so that straight edge that's a no-no all right so what we want to do is before i forget tonight is i want to come back here and change that back to my proper depth calculate that out that also changes you know the uh, uh, offsets of the cuts and everything. And um, let's preview that visible toolpath one last time as we get in here and come back into this. So um, basically the offset is, or our start depth determines from our part, because this is the part, right? And I was pointing over here to the left, you know, the whole time and lining up to this and, and all of that stuff when uh technically this uh side of the bit this is my part right here this rectangle and so this side of the bit should have been snapped over there instead of over to the left i was on the left either way but when we're at that point one start depth which is this line right here the right edge left edge of the bit on this side right edge of the bit on that side as it's going around and around that is what it's cutting to uh, if it was a zero start depth, the edge of the bit would be. This might make a little more sense. I was working on this side instead of that side, and it probably confused the shit out of y'all. But um, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, but if I was starting at a zero start depth, now I'm more offset away. Uh, that part now is much wider. Think of this V shape right here that's the part that's that v shape right here it's much wider and if i even you know even at a point one start depth bring that in you know now i've got a point one so the right side of the bit at point one bringing that bit in smaller still giving me a decent you know uh cut in but i'm still at that point one being such a shallow number got a, those parts big glue gap big glue gap if we take that same principle and we have a start depth in the right side of our bit instead of at 0 .0, 0 0.1. If we're cutting at 0.23, now the right side of the bit is down here, the edge of that bit, and it's cutting up against my part, which this is my part again. Now we have a very shallow offset, right? Which is going to bring the, it's going to reduce the size of that part. Think of this part being right here, straight across, down, and over. That's going to create this part here, that here, across, down, and over. You know, much narrower walls, 
They can fit into that V much better. Get a very shallow glue gap, perfect for glue and things like that. And, um, you know, that's what you want. That's the good way. That's the no-no way. Okay? So maybe that made a little bit more sense when I was actually working on the correct side of the bit. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, let's look at this cut. All right. So our V-shaped cut here, nice uh, cut depth flattened off at the point too, you know, that, 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 uh, that um, uh, everything, but uh, nice flat depth, no straight ridges in here that's going to block my piece from getting in. Uh, this is the flat area here that will fit into the flat area here in my female area that's that v bit's going to come down to that nice flat area and fit into that part you know so that's what we want ladies and gentlemen and that is the principles and the rules and the law that applies to all v carve tool pathing no matter what bit you use and your numbers like i said they can vary 0.18 to 0.02 0.17 to 0.03 you know all that as long as they add up but you don't want a shallow start depth you want a, a, a deep start depth okay all right all right all right all righty now with this i'm going to have a very simple box inlay right here okay very uh simple inlay uh cut on that part on that lid and uh the last thing that i'm going to do uh on this part here is uh i am going to put my rectangle back to the size of my board i'm going to draw that because on the back side the last tool path that i want to make for this i do have the v-carve inlay that's done the last tool path I want to make for this very quickly is I'm going to, and I'm not, I'm just going to show you how I draw it, but I don't know the exact size. I'm going to resize it for my hinges, but I'm going to have uh, one inch. I know they're one inch. So let's go into the size tool and make that one inch. Um, we'll go one by 0 0.0625. One. Okay. No rounded edges. You goofball. Where'd that come from? All right, let me get that into place. What in the world? Okay. All right, so hold down the shift key when you want to select and edit a part. We're going to select that. Uh, this is going to be one inch by... I'm going to go an eighth of an inch. Actually, I'm going to go uh, 0 0.2. 0 0.2. I'm going to get rid of that little pill looking thing there. All right. From my uh, edge of my board. Okay. And, uh, and I screwed up all kinds of things here. Let me get rid of this. Uh. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me draw a rectangle. Snap to that corner. Snap to that corner. Square edges. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. On my little uh, little hinge guy here, um, from the inside or the outside edge, I want this to move over and be about one inch in. Okay, so I'm going to use my move tool. Relative to its position on the x-axis, I'm going to go one inch to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to move this part out here. Um, and the bottom part of this rectangle is my bit's going to be cutting air, right? But it's going to be cutting out this little groove here. And it's going to be a groove for my hinge. Now, this is going to be cut on the back side of my board, not the front side. I do not want a nice groove cut all the way through the top. It's going to be a shallow cut for my hinge to fit in. And I think the hinges are one inch by a half inch overall, which would be a quarter inch on each half. So um, what I want to do is now that I have that in position, it's a very thin little pocket for that hinge to sit into. Um, and 
I will move on the y-axis this time down relative to its position. Uh, what do you think? A sixteenth of an inch? Let's go a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to verify with my, before I, you know, run this toolpath, I'm going to verify with my brass hinges that I have that that is correct. It might need to be 3 16 It needs to be shallower. Who knows? Uh, whatever it may be, be but uh, I, I don't want to cut this until it's done. But I do want to create the toolpath. First of all, I'm going to mirror it to the other side. Create a mirror copy. Flip it about job center. Flip it horizontally. So I have one on the other side here. And uh, for those two toolpaths, all right. Uh, that's going to be a pocket cut. I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be cutting down, uh, however wide my hinge is. I believe it's a quarter of an inch. Uh, I'll have to measure and find out. Um, it might be a little bit taller, but, uh, we're going to play with, uh, let's go three eighths just for right now. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to be using my eighth inch end mill. Uh, and I'm going to calculate this tool path. All right. And now let's imagine that uh, I'm, I've got my board flipped upside down and I'm cutting from the bottom, right? I want the hinge to be here, not at the top. So you got to kind of imagine I'm cutting from the bottom here. Uh, I'm going to flip my board out with this toolpath. But what I want this bit to do is I actually want it to come in and cut uh, these two little recesses. These two little recesses. on my lid for my hinge and on my other pieces my dovetail pieces i should have done the same thing i'll probably go back and add those in you'll see that as well uh tomorrow night i'll have those changes made but on this lid part these little pocket cuts are actually going to be cutting you know the bottom is going to be facing up on my table this will be clamped downward uh and those pockets will be down here for my hinge to go into and all it's just creating a little uh little hinge mortise if you will um a little hinge mortise uh in my part with my little eighth inch end mill and uh, i'll probably have to take my little chisel and kind of square up those little radiuses right there so my hinge fits nice and secure in there but i want to go back and measure my hinge make sure that that one half of the hinge you know how long it is and how wide that is uh so i get that perfect fit and i'll come and adjust my cut depth and my rectangle size here and all but um I've got that cutting those hinge mortises. So if you've never thought about cutting hinge mortises on a box lid or something like that or what have you, and you know the bit's going to come down on the side and it's going to cut those mortises out and give you a nice flat bottom for that hinge to rest in, you know, top actually, because you're going to cut it from the other side, but we're going to have some hinge mortises in there. So that's going to be one of the tool paths in this lid. I will appropriately set it up once I measure the hinges, but that was the last thing that needed to be done to the lid was the hinge mortise. And on the other parts, I need to go back to uh, my box sides where those grooves were getting cut in. And I need to, on one of the, uh, on, uh, one of the parts, I need to create a tool path for the hinge mortise for the, uh, one of the tail boards. One of the tailboards, you know. All right, all right, all right, guys and girls. Well, that's it. Nine fifty-two. We got eight minutes to clear our heads, say our goodbyes, and all that. Let me see if there's any questions. How many people did I tax on that one? How many people kind of get it now after seeing the diagrams and like, oh, you know, it makes sense. I've tried V-carve inlays. I've had parts that didn't quite fit together. Might have been because I was cutting beyond my tools cutting capacity. Or, you know, uh, you know, when I did fit them together, you know, my piece, my inlay was really thin and squishy because there was just a big old puddle of glue behind there, you know, and everything. It wasn't real solid and rigid. And that's the reason why we need a nice, big, deep start depth, shallow, flat depth to get that male part beefed up. All right. Let's see here. I am going to try my best. If there's any questions that I missed or any comments that I missed, you guys were having conversations by yourself. There's a lot to stream through here. Uh, but um, the, uh, you know, 
one thing, you know, I'll try my best, but here's a good question. Paul, Paul here uh, says, hey, wouldn't you do that part with an end mill? And what Paul's referring to is um, he's referring to my mail cut. Now, on smaller parts, and let me get into my mail cut here. On smaller parts and things, um, when I'm doing small inlays and all, I don't waste time changing a bit. I just let the V-bit flatten everything out. On this cut, where it's a big area that's getting uh, you know, flattened out, yes, it would be more practical for me to uh, add in a flat area clearance tool. In this case, I'll just use my eighth inch end mill. Um, or I could use my quarter inch end mill. Uh, save some time. And calculate that tool path. And uh, that will give me a, if I were to uh, reset that part, preview the visible tool path, my flat end mill would go around and do all the flat work where it can fit and everything um and then my v bit would come in and uh do the v work you know my flat end mill get all that fun out then my v bit will come in and do all the v work right uh for that inlay but uh this part here um once it gets glued into the female and everything i'm going to be separating those two pieces right so the two parts when they fit together they're going to leave a little gap that i'm going to run uh you know i could i could Put this on the table and have my here let's do this let's turn these upright the proper way uh let's get this one upright all right so i could put this inlay back on my cnc table and let my end mill come and surface this off right uh until it's all nice and surfaced to my you know female part uh, i could take it to a uh, handsaw and saw it off and sand it flush i could run it through my band saw and cut you know put my blade right between that gap cut it flush and sand it flush. However you want to get the two parts apart, those two pieces are going to get cut separated apart. So a lot of this upper part here, uh, not much of it but though, but you know, a lot of it is going to, uh, all, all this material is going to get waste, you know, thrown away. Um, so when I'm working with small inlays, this isn't a small inlay. It's a pretty decent part, eight by 10. But when I'm working with small inlays, I don't bother doing an end mill. I just let the V-bit flatten everything out and cut it because it's all going to get wasted away anyway and all so but paul you did have a good point there you know but yes on bigger parts yeah it would be more practical to throw a uh a flat area clearance tool in there to you know clear that flat area out for that male part uh ed mateo same thing uh no uh no if you're doing small inlays not really no but on bigger parts yeah it would be more practical time saving and all that stuff Let's see here. Yep, separating the two parts, you can use a uh, drum sander, hand sander, uh, bandsaw to cut the parts, and then sand finish with your orbital sander. You can put it, throw the part back on the CNC and let the CNC mill it, uh, mill away the waste on the top, you know, of that male part uh, back down flush to the female part, you know. Uh, you can absolutely do that as well. And uh, you just want to make sure you get your cut depth right on that surfacing uh, toolpath and all. A lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, let's see here. Uh, Richard asked a very important question. Laney, why didn't you create an inlay toolpath? Well, if I were talking about straight inlays with a... Uh, bit richard uh that a diameter bit like an uh 16th inch end mill eighth inch end mill something like you know uh, an inlay where i'm doing a straight pocket and a straight cutout uh then the inlay toolpath is the go-to tool for that but i'm working with very intricate parts that have very sharp details and things uh and therefore if i tried to do a straight inlay on this uh, let me do the female pocket calculation on this. Let me select my, uh, just as an example, let me select my female part here. <clears throat> doom, 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 doom. Inlay, female pocket, cutting to 0. 0.2 inches deep with, uh, uh, I'll even give it a, I'll even give it a chance. I'll give it a 16th inch end mill. 
right? Calculate that. Reset that preview, preview that visible toolpath. <clears throat> Speed it up, boy. Okay, on that um, pocket straight, straight inlay, straight inlay, uh, in some of these sharp areas here where I have tight radiuses and things, let's go into the 2D view to better illustrate this. Let's turn on that toolpath and let's go into solid mode here. On those areas where I have that intricate detail and those sharp points, that straight inlay just can't get in there, right? It cannot get into those parts and all. And I do not want any, you know, um, I don't want any, you know, rounded edges. I want nice, sharp details, sharp corners and things and stuff. So, uh, you know, all of those places that that bit couldn't fit, even to the 16th inch end mill, I'm not getting it. So I am using a V carve tool path method method where it's using a V bit, uh, to, uh, cut out those parts and everything. And, uh, let's flip back over to the female tool here. And so that V bit and all is going to get right in to that sharp detail and it's going to fill that void very nicely and everything and oh shit you're still looking at me <sighs> with a straight pocket inlay not going to create it again i'm just going to show you uh with the straight pocket inlay and let me switch back to my male part here that 16th of an inch end mill just can't get into those sharp details and everything. It just can't fit, you know? Uh, and I want nice, instead of rounded corners and all, because of the radius of that bit, I want nice sharp corners and all. And so that straight inlay won't do it. Uh, but when I'm doing a V-carve inlay, and let's turn that female on and come in here. And I'm doing that V-carve inlay my bit is going to give me those nice sharp corners. That blue area is all that inlay area and everything. Let's turn the mail off for a moment. Uh, so it that bit will be able to fit up in there and get that nice detail. So, and these aren't even sharp detail points. They're a little blunt, but they're still small enough that a regular end mill can't fit in. So there is a time and a place for a straight inlay. Absolutely. Use it all the time. But when I'm doing something that has some points and and, and fine detail in very small areas that an end mill cannot fit into, then a uh, V-carve in inlay is the method that I am going to go to. It's my go-to method for detailed inlays. All right. That was crazy. Y'all sitting there looking at me. I'm not concerned about getting hurt if you hold. Bear with me a second. Bad shoulders. Wouldn't be able to start it then. But you guys are just having your own conversation. I'm trying to find if there's any questions or anything that I missed. But uh, yeah, I know. Can't see the screen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's 10.03. Let me get back to you. Uh, so anyway, uh, good question, Richard. Uh, there is an absolute time and place for a straight pocket inlay female and male parts you know cut out but when you're doing intricate designs and you've got those sharp corners and points and you want to maintain that detail there's nothing better than a v-carve inlay to accomplish that goal yeah i know change the camera i did that that was that was it all right it's getting late ladies and gentlemen thank you hopefully you got something out of this thursday night seven o'clock be sure to join me. We're going to be in the shop. We're going to cut these parts. We are going to do the inlay cuts. Uh, I may have the male cut already, and we'll just cut the female pocket depending on the time uh, and everything. But um, we'll definitely get the grooves and all that cut and do some dry fitting and all. Uh, I really appreciate you all. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for this long, late night. Uh, we filled it. We, we covered a lot of stuff. 
importing from SketchUp, how to deal with those imports and those vectors and all. This was a very basic design. When you're importing, you know, complex patterns and stuff and all, those vectors can get a little bit more complicated to work with, but not too bad. You know, you just got to eliminate what you're not using, keep what you are using. That's the key goal to that. Uh, v carve inlays, deep start depth, shallow flat depth. Uh, you do need some flat depth. So I would not go any less than a 0.02 on a flat depth. You know, 0.02 would be about the less I would go. Um, we got to have some glue gap. You know, we don't want to have a dry joint, too dry of a joint. Uh, the uh, V carve inlay is. Uh, a very fun project and once you get one under your belt it's the same steps and for me 0.18 and 0.02 for my male cut 0.2 for my flat depth of my female same never changes every time i do an inlay it's the same every single time and you know it's rinse and repeat so get one under your belt do an inlay just on a scrap piece of paper if you use scrap piece of wood or whatever Male cut, female cut, put them together, cut them apart, sand them, get a nice pretty like, oh man. And then once you get it out from under your, you know, uh, in your belt, it's all the same. Now you can start throwing it in, throwing inlays into projects everywhere. All right, everybody. I really appreciate you. I want to thank you all for hanging out and talking. I'm glad y'all were able to have a good conversation with yourselves. If I, I'll go through all those comments, if I missed anything, I will answer it in the comment section of the video. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Thank you, Wayne.